in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Shalom prati ke sida liya ko shabra hasida basta. Jakota sabadi kati alagosh. Pray and cry for a visit. Jesus, you love me too much. Jesus himself will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Good evening. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. It's good to have everyone around. Very quickly before we start, I want to appreciate, I'm told... Um, where is she? I can't find her. Um, oh, Pastor Petrock's wife, Pastor Twain. God bless you. Let's honor her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She was covered somewhere and I cannot find her. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Very wonderful couple doing a great work for God in Mina. Influencing, contending. For Kingdom Relevance, Part 2. We started Part 1 last week, Contending for Kingdom Relevance, Part 2. Please, I'd like to have your attention tonight. I have a lot to share tonight. Every time I'm sharing something that I consider to be important, my prayer as always is that we place the same value on those informations in this kingdom we are glorified not just by the will of God alone, but our access to the truths of the kingdom. Acts chapter 13, please, and verse 36. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Last week we started with that scripture as our text. Let me just open it from here. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. The Bible says, for David, reading from King James now, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. The verse of emphasis is the A part. It says, for David, 
after he had served his own generation, Amplified says that he served the purposes of God in his generation. And we began to consider last week how that it is not enough to serve God alone. You must serve God within the context of your generation. Please, if you do not have the teaching, do well to get it. It is very important that um, you lay your hand on that teaching and listen to it. And um, we stress the need to not only serve God, but to serve God in our generation. It is possible for a man to serve God and not be relevant within the context of a generation. Are we together? That you can serve God with your all, well-meaning, sincere, but not be able to serve God in a way that inspires a generation. And I think my goal as a person, much more than being in ministry, is to be able to inspire a generation to love and to passionately pursue after God. If I'm able to achieve that in my lifetime, then I think I was able to contribute significantly to the program of God on earth. We must be able to inspire a generation. And that cannot happen outside of influence. I told us that to serve God profitably and to inspire a generation to do the same, we must contend for the requisite level of kingdom influence that it would take to represent the purpose of God on earth. If you are with me, say amen. amen. We took the A part last week. Just uh, we have, I have five points for you here. And point number one was that you must know God. Are we still together? Dust your notes. Let's look at it. Let's get to work. Daniel 11.32. The Bible says the B part. It says, but the people, Daniel 11.32, but the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God, the Bible says that they shall be strong and shall do exploits. There is a relationship, as we established last week, between the knowledge, the personal revealed knowledge of God and your depth and degree of exploits. And we said according to Psalm 24 and verse 6, just doing a quick recap, how that Jacob for us is the scriptural portrait of what God's idea of seeking him is. That every time God says we should seek him, he doesn't leave us to guess how to seek him. He exemplifies um, his desire, his intention, and how his pattern of pursuing him in the person Jacob. The Bible says there is a generation that should seek the Lord in the similitude of Jacob. Are we together? And so we'll take from there point number two. Now please pay attention, pay attention. When the word of God is coming, Satan is also at work to steal from people um, the implanted word, the word that is able to profit them. You don't just rise in life by your desire and intentions alone. It is the quality of the word that you receive within your spirit. The second key in contending for generational relevance, the second key is that you must be transformed. Write it down. Transformation is the second key we are going to be dealing with tonight. That no man is able to influence a generation. Please play the strings for me. No man is able to influence a generation effectively, effectively, except they are transformed. Are we together? Yes, please. So it matters that we are transformed. And the Bible says in Romans, when you read from verse um, chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, um, I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, and be not conformed. Listen very carefully to this word. The word world, there is the Greek word aeon. It means the mindset, the stronghold, the thinking pattern that comes with the age. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Transformation is a key. If you want to sustain 
a position where you are able to influence a generation, you must be transformed. In this sense, to be transformed means to have a superior belief system. Write it down, please. Let's deal with belief systems a bit. It is the one reason why many of us may never be used by God in a very notable way. We are very well-meaning, we are very sincere, but we have been unable to sustain a superior belief system. Everyone say belief system. Say it again, belief system. Believe me, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that if you want to serve God profitably, especially in the 21st century, you must sustain a belief system that is higher than the cultural background, the limitations that you have come from, the territorial background that um, comes with your geography, etc. You will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom efficiently if you do not sustain a superior belief system. Let's discuss this a bit. Now, many of us come from backgrounds where because of our our upbringing we have sustained thinking patterns that may be well-meaning but are not consistent with the ways of god are we together i have taught us extensively on mindsets we have discussed strongholds um, but then it will never be too much to continue to teach us until we bend to that formation that the word seeks to bring in us with respect to transformation your belief system must be higher than your background your belief system must be higher than your failures. Your belief system must be higher than your current level of exposure if you want to contend for relevance. There are men of God, women of God, and churches whose relevance cannot be outside certain geographic regions because although they are anointed, although they love God, the biases that come with their belief systems, be it cultural be it um, sociological the biases that come with their belief system will not afford them the opportunity to expand to be global in perspective to maintain or sustain a superior belief system does not mean compromising on your kingdom standards but it means to have the flexibility to be able to adjust to approach life from a global view Though from a kingdom perspective, you must be global in your mindset. As I'm talking now, there are people following from different nations. And you must be able to communicate Christ in such a way and manner that in spite of their cultural limitations, in spite of their sociological differences, you are able to present the purposes of Christ in a way that is understood and received by them anyone who cannot do that will not be relevant it's as simple as that is god speaking to us the mistake that many of us make is that when we start out something in life we keep scrounging around for people who relate with our geographic experiences as though they are the only ones we are called and sent to are we together I, I come from Plateau State, for instance, and I can start ministry and my entire, the design of the ministry was only for those who come within my geographic context. Anyone who is Igbo or Yoruba or from Ghana or from Australia will not be blessed by that service because the program was so designed to only minister to whoever has my kind of geographic context. That's a very dangerous understanding. You can be anointed but then God will not anoint you to be able to bless people because the limitation, you do not sustain a superior belief system. Your paradigm has not been so constructed such that you can minister to people of all races and communicate Christ. Are we blessed? It's the reason why many businesses don't rise beyond certain levels in Africa. Is because is the reason why many ministries do not go out of their localized environment. It, like I said, it doesn't mean to compromise on your standards, but to sustain the flexibility to know that you are dealing with a generation that has come from a backlog of belief systems. And that in as much as you define what you want to be your primary belief system, you must have the flexibility to be able to adjust to different cultures, are we together to adjust to different doctrinal approaches to spirituality without being compromised 
I preach in different churches regardless of their doctrinal beliefs. I am able to maintain my convictions but to be able to navigate through the tides of doctrinal and denominational differences such that you can preach Christ in a way and a manner that does not end up offending and destroying the people you are ministering to. A transformed mind. Satan prefers you healed. In fact, Satan prefers you anointed without a transformed mind because he knows the oil will remain small for as long as the vessel is small. Are we together? The increase in the oil is not dependent on God's will alone. It's dependent on the size of the vessel. When the woman was saying the oil is small, the oil was hearing her. And you can imagine the oil saying, I am not small. You have only hosted me in a small vessel. And the prophet said, I know where the problem is. Go and borrow vessels. You don't need another oil. The oil you have has infinite potentials. Expand capacity for that oil to find expression. That's why you see that some of us that are carrying the anointing of certain fathers seem to look more anointed than them. We are not more anointed than them. The anointing just came on a superior mindset. So it gave it more room for expression are we together a prophet who never had the opportunity to go to school a prophet who never had the opportunity to learn a number of languages a prophet who never had the opportunity to travel outside of nigeria outside of his physical environment there is a perspective that even the knowledge of god cannot break so he will communicate christ with the limitation of that perspective if you come now and receive that same anointing with a renewed mind, you now give the anointing a broader perspective to be able to manifest itself. You need a transformed mind, brothers and sisters. You don't just need anointing on your head. You need a transformed mind. The law of the mind is a principle that I have taught us again and again. I watch people, did you know, I honestly watch people and many times I feel sad. I don't even know how to start praying for them because I know that the prayer I want to pray for them will not be answered. The, 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 the faultiness of their belief system will necessitate that that answer never arrives to their life. Are we together? There are people who, they may be attacked by demons, yes. They may be doing a lot of things, but the kind of result they are crying for requires a certain level of renewal and transformation. And because they have not contended for that level of renewal, you know that that prayer will never be answered in their life. And it's a very frustrating thing for a man of God because you, you, you can't tell somebody who is crying and saying, Ah, Apostle, can God show up for me in this area? You already know that that thing will not be answered. As far as that person remains at that level of thinking, that prayer will never be answered in his life. It's a very difficult thing. That's why sometimes when I'm counseling people, I just pray for them. Because it's very difficult. You look at the person talking and you see the backlog of limiting belief systems that empower the gates of hell over the life of the individuals. And then you see the, the intention, the sincerity, the purity of their heart. You know what they desire. You see how true the desire is. But you know that that desire will never come to pass that way except they contend for a superior belief system. You look at people and you know that this guy is already pegged to his loyalty to cultural beliefs. Cultural beliefs that are not kingdom compliant. And you know that as far as this international context of ministry that this brother or sister is desire of... You, of you can have visions in the realm of the spirit of yourself having branches all around you will not go anywhere many of us do not have the level of adjustment that allows us to be global in our approach are we together now just because you see a lady look like this or a guy look like this it, it, it can get you so offended to a point that you cannot communicate Christ to the person. And now that's the person who wants 10,000 members. 
you cannot have 10,000 members who all believe your context, your cultural context or doctrinal context. That means you are going to create a system of bias in that church that will be clear to a certain group of people that you are not sympathetic to them. And very soon there will be all versions of revolt coming from their frustrations. It is not God nor his inability to reach us but that our level of transformation has not ascended enough to be able to capture that dimension of spiritual possibility that we seek if god is speaking to you say amen, amen. many people want finances and they think all there is to finances is business you hear them pray and fast they even write oh god i'm trusting you for one one million per month and they have no respect for money they just call it one whereas their thinking level notice even financially look at the, the figure that recycles around your life it's a reflection of the only amount your mind can host if they bless you higher than that your thinking will reduce it to a circle some people will never go past 100,000. Give them 10 million in two weeks. It has returned back because your mindset is like a calibrator, like a thermostat of an iron. It pegs at a level of thinking and stops there. There are pastors, the moment they cross 100 members, something must happen in that church and return the members back to 100. It's, it's not about any bias for growth. It's because they have not yet contended through transformation to the level of leadership that can make them to be able to pastor and lead that number of people. Before you cry that heaven releases something to you, find out whether you have created space through a transformed mind to host that dimension of spiritual reality. Otherwise, you are going to waste resources. Are we blessed? transformation i've taught us that you are a reflection of what you think about now please don't think this is some positive thinking teaching no matter who you are you will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom above and beyond your level of understanding of god of life and the transformation that your mind gives god you see the danger of serving God without a transformed mind is that because some measure of anointing will still be on your life, though you are not transformed, the limitation of your mindset will ride along with the anointing and make people think it's the anointing that is making you behave that way. If koinonia is not excellent, for instance, you will think that the kind of anointing on Joshua Selman is what makes for you to not be excellent so now i can use my imperfection in the area of excellence to mean just because the sick are getting healed through my life it must be the anointing that is making me trivialize the need for excellence and when you receive the anointing from my life you will also receive the impartation of the limitation to a life of excellence and so you see people mentor after mentor impartation after impartation and the lapse that lack of transformation brings will continue moving and we will make it look as though it was God or it came with the anointing. No. A transformed mind will produce a transformed life. A transformed life will produce a destiny that is worthy of emulation. Nobody will emulate you just because you think you are born again. There are many people who are worthy of being listened to but not worthy of being followed. That you are that people are listening to you, listening to you does not mean that they can follow you. It takes more than good preaching to be emulated. They must look at the construction of your belief systems to be superior enough to be worthy of them to mold their life after your belief. You're not just going to come with one Greek and Hebrew word, one suit and one watch, one car and one house and then believe that people will follow you you cannot inspire a generation that way your belief system must be so superior and it will tell on the kind the quality and the frequency of results that you get and then it will cause someone to say look i will follow after you as you follow after christ Nobody just follows you because there are all kinds of men of God moving up and down, yoking young people in the name of sons and daughters. You must follow me. But the son and the daughter is seeing an inferior life. 
where the life you are living does not reflect the dimension God is showing him. Yet you are still pressing him and saying you must follow me. And he said, Mr. Man, I will follow you if you transit to reflect how my future should be. Be transformed. You can never truly rise above your mindset. I meet people all the time. I travel to several places. And most times, the people relate with me within the context of their cultures. And I am grateful to God for teaching me the ability to have flexibility in belief systems. Otherwise, I don't know how many churches, how many regions I would hurt with statements, not knowingly. I would hurt with behavioral patterns. You see Reinhard Bonke and all these evangelists, when they come to Africa, they try to look for African attires and wear. They try to learn thank you and God bless you. Even in Yoruba, you think they like it like that? They are trying to create a system that makes them look sympathetic to that territory so that their voice will be heard. Are we together? You must sustain a superior belief system. You can go to a church where they don't allow you to move up and down around the pulpit. Do you have a superior belief system to stand and confirm with the way that church believes in the operation and still teach Christ? There are churches that you may not be allowed to pray in tongues openly while you are preaching. Don't just say me, I'm like this, so you don't know my encounter with the Holy Ghost. When if we everywhere, I, they must know that I'm an addict. Then you are, you are going to remain small. You will keep impressing the small people who think like you and never become global in your perspective. Is God blessing someone? You must be flexible. We are excellent people, but we are not fools. You see, during the miracle service, Sometimes someone is healed and maybe you are taking the testimony and the woman cannot speak English. You are not going to yoke this woman and say, when is she going to learn English? Just because she didn't have the opportunity to learn English, you yoke her? No. Are we together? We are global, but we are in Zaria. Madam, speak house her. Are we together? Speak what you can speak and let someone interpret it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. But at the same time, I'm not going to travel to Lagos or travel outside this country and go and I'm speaking and I'm giving examples that can only be understood by people in Zaria. Many of you carry your background everywhere. God is saying depart from, from AI to a land flowing with milk and honey. We carry that background. You go somewhere and stand and raise a song that only you know. And then you are watching and seeing the... I clash that symbol. And they are watching you and say, what in the world is going on here? And you will be so impressed with yourself until you are no longer invited. They have a board meeting and say, no, don't ever bring him again. Is God speaking to us? You must be kingdom in your, your, your approach but you must be global in your perspective. When you want to become a voice to your generation, you must understand that you are not a voice to Yoruba people. You are not a voice to Igbo people. You are not a voice to Hausa people. You are not a voice to Africans. You are a voice to as many as God will call. And your, the way you behave must be able to adjust in a way and manner that of course you will be sympathetic to the soil where you are domiciled in. But at the same time be flexible enough for people of all races and cultures to be able to find a place for themselves. A global approach to life. A superior mindset. I say it with all humility. Most, most men of God usually are invited within certain regions and certain contexts and no more if i'm a northerner chances are that all the churches that should invite me to preach should only be northern churches why because i relate i'm more sympathetic to their sociological context but that's not the case there is nowhere in this nation and outside of this nation that God has taken me to that have not been received with joy because I have mastered the art of upgrading my understanding, my paradigm and my approach to life in a way and manner that is able to help me communicate Christ effectively. I've gone to places where 
an interpreter is needed i just stand up and i think the guy is coming to tell me the time and then i just see him with a mic too whatever i say he repeats it or automatically i know that okay we have to be wise in that approach how the power of god will move with this kind of limitation you have to find a way to walk through it greets the man smile at him and the people are already laughing because they know that that's not how you preach usually so they are extra blessed because of the fortitude to make that adjustment are you seeing that now people already know how you are in your default state so when you go out of your way to make that adjustment they they it's a show of spiritual maturity that you have the ability to have revolted and say you invited me please mr man walk out of this stage but you are able to limit yourself to create a context that allows you to minister christ powerful revelation be transformed be transformed brothers and sisters be transformed live where you are don't let your background don't let your background cause you to think in a way and manner that you think everyone is from your village. And every time you see people behave in a way that is not consistent with your cultural context, you are tempted to insult them. No, sir. No, sir. There are things you cannot do as a northerner. You know, northerners, we are fairly conservative in our approach to life. There are things that you may not be able to do normally. Are we together now? But then you go to certain regions and you see them do it. There are places that, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm somebody who is very organized and excellent and I, I, I like things in decency and order. But there are churches that you can go to that um, just a young guy from the choir comes to just tap your back as if you are his mate and gives you mic. Say, this, this one is nice. And you can try and say, ah, Mr. Go on Facebook. Are you crazy? Is there something wrong? I am Apostle Joshua Selman. No, sir. You have to have the flexibility to understand. That gentleman is not rude. He is only a victim of the context of his culture. That's why many Nigerians go abroad and look like thieves. They carry all kinds of siren and move around and people say, Who is this guy? He is a man of God. He just drops down in a hot afternoon with a suit and a collar and a big chain and stands. And while he's talking, the people cannot connect. Not because they are bad. It's strange to them. And then he begins to speak. Ah, I, I hope, I hope um, you are using generator. And they say, no, no, they don't take light here. And you embarrass yourself. And you are spiritual. You are born again. But the limitation of... Now, listen. Some of you are laughing, but what I'm saying is very serious. The limitation of your context. There are homes you go to as a leader. They don't eat on the, 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 the chairs, the sofas there. They all go to the dining table. Are we together now? And one day God is going to open doors for you. And then you go there and they sit there and say, what are we doing there? Say, we're going to say, say for what? Me? No. I hardly eat. How many times do I eat in a week? I'm always fasting. So what? So what? You must sustain a superior belief system. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Remember that I'm on a project to helping you becoming, to, to become men and women of influence not only spiritual people you can persecute me now because you don't understand what you are yet becoming until you get to the future and you turn back you say apostle thank you thank you you're not going to carry yesterday into tomorrow and I'll, i want tomorrow to clap for you for bringing yesterday into it now seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses he says um let us lay aside every weight weights are not seen necessarily they are backlog of information and mindset belief systems that may not be appropriate for the context that god is taking you are we together superior belief systems there are churches and i say that with due honor please i don't mean to be sarcastic there are churches where women are not giving any regard for any reason including the pastor's wife and the pastor's wife is comfortable with it because she grew within that context so she doesn't expect anything so doing what i just did to appreciate pastor petrock's wife a board can call a meeting and say no let's sit down something is going on in this church what the, they've never clapped for us and a woman not a, a woman so what if she's the pastor's wife context of culture 
So you will go somewhere and find out that they are introducing people. The anointing is boiling in you for the mic to be given so that you preach. And they are saying, let's take our time and appreciate our mother in the Lord. She is a this and you are saying, what kind of carnal believers are this? No. You must have the accommodation. Because not a thing may be weakness to you, but it's not weakness in another culture. There is a culture where a father and his child cannot eat in the same plate. It's impossible under no circumstance. There is a culture where a father eating with his child is proof of love. So you don't go somewhere and see a son eating with his father and even feeding the father and you say, my God, what taboo is this? Let's be careful. Preserve your belief systems, but have the flexibility to give the world you live in a chance to know Christ. Give people a chance. Give people a chance. Don't turn everyone to look like you. Give people a chance. You must have that flexibility. Hold a superior mindset that allows you to be able to accommodate people's limitation or people's context. Sometimes it's not a limitation. They are just different than you. That's all. Are we together? Next week is my birthday. I thank God for it. I don't celebrate birthdays. Listen, listen. I never saw any of my loved ones celebrating birthdays. In fact, sometimes my parents used to forget their birthdays. We just remind them and say, Ah, it's your birthday. They say, Oh, glory be to God. I came from a background where celebrating, celebrating things at all. And then because of my approach to life, my standards to life on many fronts are very high. So even when I've done something that is worthy of commendation, I sometimes find myself rejecting any, any drive for commendation to say, look, we need to aspire. I'm, I'm a very visionary person. Once you do something, it's done. Glory be to God. Let's face forward. What is the next thing? Are you seeing that? Some come from families where they come back with results, 17th position, and they cut chicken for you. 17th. 17th position, and you eat chicken. Are we together? Now, God calls you with that person to work together in ministry. You take first, and your father says, Why do you have one in punctuality? As if he didn't see first position. I'm not concerned about first. What is first? What is first? And someone is taking 17th and the father will say, I never went to school. Thank you. Caught chicken. Those two people working together, if they don't create a system of accommodating their limitation, there will be a lot of problem. And the Holy Spirit will be blamed for this. All of them are spiritual. Remember, this guy will say, it's the Holy Spirit that trained me that way. This one will say, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of celebration. With joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation. This one will say, one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. All of them, it's still scripture they are bringing. But their belief systems are different. This guy tells himself, I want to buy myself a birthday gift of a watch. He said, what kind of thing is that? Do you waste money and celebrate yourself? Are you the only one doing this and that? And you see that those people can be anointed. And then they never go global. Imagine that I am such a leader. And I see you celebrating something. I say, Pastor Alpha, why are you celebrating your son? He said, well, we just glory. I say, what nonsense is that? There are souls perishing. There are lives. There are mission agencies. How can you spend 50,000 on your child? Is he the only one that is coming? What kind of attitude is that? Now imagine what I'm presenting. And it's as soon as I talk to him, I lift someone out of a wheelchair. So you may use the result of the wheelchair to think it's the Holy Spirit that taught me how to be that. And then this guy, on the other hand, keeps celebrating everything and finishes the church money. God gives them 100,000. The 100,000 goes on celebration. Are we together? Today is his day of being born again spiritually. Tomorrow is his, the first day he encountered a book that transformed his mind. Next week is the first day he met his wife. Not anniversary, the day he met his wife to celebrate. And all is the church that pays for it. And at the end of it, his life looks loud and carnal. And some members say something is wrong with our pastor. Are you seeing why members sit down and group themselves? 
according to their mindset and create whatever trouble their mindset can identify. Have you noticed that they don't sing local songs here? This one says, have you noticed that it's just American? We don't sing American songs. All those things are reflections of limiting beliefs. Are we together? I once gave someone 10,000 naira to buy something. What he was going to buy, there is 2,000 of it. I gave him the money intentionally because I wanted to prove to him that his mindset was not yet upgraded. I gave him the money. I said, buy it. I, he didn't even, even the 2,001, he didn't buy it. Because he just felt, how can I carry this and do this? But it was a gift. I just gave him money to do it. May God deliver us from the limitations of an inferior thinking. Look at me. Let me explain something to you. Two people come. Happy come. Stand here. Chion, stand here. These are two different people. Listen. Coming from two different cultural contexts. Do you know that the danger of not having an upgraded mindset works twofold? Number one. This lady now, because of her just an example eh, my dear an inferior mindset that she may be sustaining listen carefully it can make this lady to fall into the hands of a bad man because intrinsically because of her mindset she has believed i am not good enough so that low level thinking of not knowing you are wonderfully and fearfully made can make her fall into the hands of a wicked man who will kick her like a football every day are we together now? Because she already sustains a mindset that says, I am weak. It's a privilege. Dangerous. Then, I wish it's another lady. You go back. Another lady come. Stand here. This other lady, because of her awareness of how inferior her mind is, will become aggressive in her approach to life in a way to prove that she's not, she's not just a... a a low level lady are you seeing that two of them are behaving it, the same mindset is informing different behaviors this one now just settles for just anything in life i don't mean it has to be married just anything in life someone can come and bully her and just collect her phone collect anything and you don't have a voice this other person you come don't think i'm not you know i'm did that i'm one of you family all those ranting is as a result of an intrinsic low level esteem that she's having and she uses aggression to fight it both people need deliverance from insensitive aggression and from giving yourself cheap to life there is a mindset is god speaking to us i'm dwelling here because if you understand what i'm teaching you my life changed listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters and i say it with all humility i never went out of zaria to be renewed and come back so wherever you are is enough for the transformation to come all this lie of saying i must go to dubai first and america exposure is important don't get me wrong but he said from where thou art lift up your eyes you can start from where you are and say, look, we came from a family where when rain falls, the, we don't know what part is according to the, the, the heaviness of the rain. That's where it determines which location rain will fall, um, the water will drop in. But from there, you can start thinking, in the name of Jesus, I will be a blessing to nations. In the name of Jesus, I'm upgrading my mind by the Spirit. I have Gary. That's all I have in my wardrobe. But in the name of Jesus, I will feed nations. While you are doing that, we live in a very sarcastic world that will want to intimidate you. You don't have to revolt in weakness. But at the same time, you maintain a healthy perspective constructed by the word of God. That's why it's important to know the word of God. You need to know what God has said about you. So that you will not listen to what God did not say about you. When you know what God has said about you, it doesn't matter what another person says. Is God speaking to us? Which of these two are you? As a result of limiting beliefs. There are many of us who have the call of God upon our lives. But as you are like this, you would dare not say yes to the call. Because you've never seen anyone rise in your background. That the most, the most educated person has SSC in your family. SSC, that's all. 
And so God says, I'm going to use you. And you are like, ah, it's not for people like us. Oh God, I will gladly be an usher in whatever church it is. And God says, no. According to my predetermined counsel, you are the one I will use. Is God speaking to us? Brothers and sisters, I bring you a word. As limited as you look, you are still the one God is talking about. When God talks about an army that will rise listen very carefully when god talks about men and women who will rise and shake the gates of hell he's not talking about someone somewhere i have always maintained the resolve that anything good i see in the bible i say god is talking about me listen if i didn't have a superior mindset i wouldn't be in ministry now because our world is full of sarcastic people who will bully you psychologically they will make it look like what is the basis of doing ministry what is this what is that where will you get money from to hell with the devil i came to preach to someone that in the name that is above all names whatever god has said you will become you must become adonai lamb of god you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. Adonai, Adonai. In my life, replace the old ideas. Let your kingdom come. Ah, let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom reign. Listen, if you will allow God change your belief system. I promise you, there is no devil in hell that can stop where you will go to. They will just keep criticizing while you are rising. Like an inferno of fire. No devil will stop you. Listen, let me teach you something. Be inspired, be challenged, but never intimidated. Don't let any man born of a woman stand and bully you emotionally. Whether because of finances, or because of looks, or because of education, the devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, every voice you have been listening to that has made you to reject the purposes of God in your life, I silence that voice over your life now. Sit down. Ejimi is here. Ask him when the Lord began to speak to us about what the messages will do around the world. I didn't sit down saying from Zaria to the whole world, Haba, is it people like us? When there are great men like the Oyedepos and the Papa Ie Adeboes, I honor them, I respect them, but not to the detriment of my revelation of God. Come on now, please. Don't love Joshua Selman so much that you look down on yourself and your destiny and your anointing. Love him and give him the honor that is due, but say, I'm coming too. There is an anointing upon my life. No, sir. And sometimes we pastors love it. We love it when people demean themselves to prove that we are great. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. There is no good leader that will not want to see his people rise up and even be greater than him. We started that message and I announced to them, I said the Lord said we should not sell any one of the tapes. That I told him, I said I saw the message on the wings of the spirit going everywhere. Ejimi was the one who designed the logo of ENI. Ask him, he would tell you. Ejimi almost cried designing that logo. I couldn't design, but I told him, you must design what I saw in the spirit. He would do this. I said, no, sir. This is not what I saw. Adjust this. He was so tired. I said, this logo you are seeing is going to the nations. Design it well. Ask him. I saw the vision. I said, your hand, you must find a way 
of seeing what God showed me. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Is it because I came from a background where we don't have light? Is it because our house was made with mud house? My mind is not mud mind. No, sir. No, sir. Listen, I have proven with my life that you can break any barrier. It's true. God has used me as a statement to prove to you that this race, ba, my brother, if God holds your hand, let the people keep talking. You just move. You just move and watch with shock and wonder. Who has lied to you that just because you read this or you have this, you cannot be great in life? Who told you you cannot contend for a position of influence? You go to bed in the night and see a massive crusade. You get up and say, no, no, it's Reinhard Bunker's crusade. God says, no, no, it's you. And while he's talking, he says, ah, God, when, when so, so, so man of God has not even done that. What is your business with the man of God's call? Ah, even so come, 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 Lord Jesus. That which you have revealed, let it come. When Koinonia was about to start... I was in a retreat and I saw the visions and I was sharing it with them. One of the things that I love, you hear me talk a lot about Ejimi. One of the things that I love about him is because he's always a victim of my revelations. When God shows me like this, I call him and just keep pounding it on him. And sometimes I honestly see that he, he wants to be honorable to say, Apostle, look, I don't doubt you. I'm a man of faith too, but ah, will it happen? You see why it's dangerous to be close to me? Because when you are listening, you can't say it won't happen. Because automatically you have become an antichrist. And any antichrist in my life must go. You are here right now. You trek from where you were here. But God has given you the name of your foundation. And God already told you that you will be spending as much as a billion dollar per year and you are saying, God, please, uh, I, I, I give that vision to a Jimmy. And God says, why do you believe to me? Brothers and sisters, I bring before you an arrogant society that does not know the power of God. They don't know that God is the lifter of men. So when God shows you things, you go to them for accreditation. And they use their limitation to say, God has never moved this way. No. No. There is no way I cannot go to. No. There is, there is, there is, there is. And, and, and I'm not just saying this just because God has brought some measure of results. It's been like that. Those who know me from day one, it's not boasting. I'm not talking of vain arrogance. That's not what I'm talking about. A settled confidence. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, persuaded that one day I will not beg for bread. That one day the nations will gather together. Right from those days when we were sitting on the ground, I used to describe the international headquarters of this ministry that I saw about 47 flags of nations. I used to say it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it and hear sarcastic people speak. You, God said you will marry a pastor. God doesn't have any woman to give his son and he will come and give a village girl like you. And God says, that's right. It's village as I want. So that the excellency of power may be of God and not of men. Can you pray in tongues just for one minute and say, Lord, I, I reject any belief system that is not consistent with your ways and your word. Yes, you are able to take me high. Yes, you are able to lead me to the place of destiny. Praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Great things have I spoken of you, O Zion. Lord, I believe you. 
I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Brothers and sisters, when you find your destiny through the word, then the first limitation, listen, sit down, sit down, sit down. The first thing to change in your life is not your shoe. The first thing to change in your life is not your, uh, what they call this thing, your hair. The first thing to change in your life is not your toothpaste. The first thing to change in your life is not your room. The first thing to change, second only to your encounter with the spirit, is your mind. Remain with the dirty clothes and let your mind keep changing. And see whether your mind will not buy new clothes and change that body. We, we spend time trying to live a fake life, buying every other thing and starving our minds. There are pastors who start ministry. They know nothing about church growth, no anointing, no nothing. They buy the most expensive suits, expensive watches, expensive chair and room, and they preach to themselves. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. That's a song you will be singing when your mind causes your life to change. Let me tell you this, quit this pressure of living a fake life. If all you have is Gary, take it with honor. Whoever has gone ahead of you, those who go ahead of you have a funny way of turning back to make you look like, oh, just to let you know I just ate turkey. God bless you with your turkey. My turkey is here. I am patient enough to let it come. The creative power, the superior power, there is no demon that can stand a transformed mind. I tell you this, your mind is a gate. Let it grow right where you are. You are a man of God, but no one is placing a demand yet on your grace and ministry. Don't start moving around with cards and getting angry and say, Jimmy, is it that you didn't know God called me? Can't you invite me for the prayer meeting? It's a sign you are not growing. Remain in the wilderness and continue to build your mind. When your season of appearing comes, brothers and sisters, you will sit down and wonder and say, you mean life can be this cheap? I'm not in a hurry to go where God has not taken me to. I would rather get there here and be patient. But when I do get there, you will know he took me there. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Contending for kingdom relevance, the power of transformation. You are global in your approach. No one intimidating you, only inspiring you. Don't gather people in your life to intimidate you. Gather them to inspire you, to provoke you to godliness. If my life is intimidating you, I'm destructive to your destiny.
I was almost saying verse 3. Number 3. Jesus. Mm. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will all know ourselves. It's true. What you are receiving is like an infection. You will never be able to undo it. It's true. It's like you gave somebody chloroquine. Huh? And then you tell the person to remove out the chloroquine again. How are you going to do it? It's already there. Just be patient. If it's an itch, enjoy it for, I don't know how long it happens, three to five days. That's how your destiny is. What is entering your spirit and your mind cannot be brought out again. There's only entrance. There's no exit. Once it gets there, by yourself, you will turn and see your life changing. And you say, God, what is, what is going on? Then you will sing this song by yourself. Not as a special number, but a testimony. And they glorified God in me. Number three, let's hurry up. The third key in contending for kingdom relevance is that you must be extremely valuable. Write it down. Key number three, extreme value. Those who will be representatives of the purposes of God for their generation, please write it down, are not only men and women who will know God. They are not only men and women who will be transformed. Your transformation affects you alone. It is your value that affects others. Your value is proof that you have been transformed. Your transformation blesses you alone. It is your value that now extends to others. And that's when your life begins to be rewarded, when you are valuable. The law of value is a powerful key. That your similarities decide your comfort. It is your difference that decides your rewards. When you are similar with people in many respects, you are able to stay together. It creates a system of accommodation. But for your rewards in life, it is your value and your difference. Whether it is in ministry, whether it is in business, in career, those who are extremely valuable, valuable beyond ignoring, they are the ones who will command influence into this world. Is God speaking to us? Extreme value. Extreme value. Years ago, my dear mentor, blessed memory, Dr. Miles Munro, while he was mentoring me in the area of purpose and value, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me that when you are so valuable, Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. But today I see it. The proof that you are valuable is that men are seeking for you. If no one is looking for you, it's a message from your future to your today. Upgrade. Be valuable. All men seek for you. Not just to the degree to which you love God, but to the degree to which you have represented value to them. And they will not seek for you empty-handed. They will seek for you with their gold and their silver. They will seek for you with gold. They will seek for you with frankincense. They will seek for you with myrrh. They will never come empty-handed. Your generation is too scarce of value to ignore you when you are valuable. The greed of men cannot stop your reward system when you are valuable. Extremely valuable. When I talk to people and I tell them, what can you do? And they say, I can do this. My next question is, how good are you? I say, no, but God is helping us. That is a religious talk by lazy people. Are we together? It's an excuse. It's proof that they have pegged themselves at a level and would not want to rise higher. Say, no problem, here and there. No. Oh, you are, you, are, you are a music minister. How good are you? Well, I'm, I'm trying. Trying like what? We live in a world where value is so scarce. When it is truly seen, it is sought immediately. Immediately. I was blessed when my dear brother, the pastor there, sent me a text. You can imagine. 
that he just came here and a woman calls him to give him all of that. Imagine that someone tells him now, that this man of God is a herbalist. He says he's a good herbalist. I, I want that kind of herbalist. <laughs> Hallelujah. The reason why the excuses they bring in your life is valued is because your value is lower than the excuses. When your value rises higher than any excuse that can be brought against you, people will ignore even what is obvious to seek you. You go to buy suya and you stand and the smoke is all over your face and your clothes. But the value is too important for the smoke to deter you. Are we together? You stand there salivating patiently. Two people in front of you and you are not complaining. Your dignity notwithstanding. If you can make the meat go home. It's as simple as that. And the person making it is not in a hurry. He's not in a hurry. If you have a, I didn't force you, you can. And you stand, you complain but remain. You insult but remain. This will be my last time but remain. It's your last time until after three days when you are hungry again and you go back. When your enemies join to seek you, you are valuable. They search around for alternatives and don't find and say, look, we have to just make do with what is available. When God wants to honor a man, he puts something in your life that is not available anywhere. At least not in that fashion. A few years ago, a man was praying for me, a great man of God. I went to see him and saw into his life. And then he looked at me and just laid his hands on, on my head and said, Oh God, create a problem around his region that only him can solve. I said, what kind of prayer is this? Just slap my head and say, <laughs> If that prayer is answered for your business, you will be afraid. That's the kind of answer to prayers that make people angry. They say, this mama must be using a charm. One of our mothers here gave a testimony recently. When, I, when she, she was telling me about the testimony, I will not mention the details, but it's a breakthrough that God gave her. That it, these are the kind of breakthroughs that if God gives you, you have reached December. <laughs> Even though you are in April, you have reached December, you can start laughing. Seeth thou a man, any man, seeth thou a man, Diligent in his business, there is a promise that he shall stand before the great, he shall not stand before mean men. Let me tell you why you are standing before mean men. It's not because there are powers fighting you alone. There may be an element of that, but let me tell you, your, your mediocrity has authorized a life of average to remain with you. Whether as a man of God, I've challenged you, I've challenged all the people here, the leaders here, and you're a man of God here, I'm challenging you. Don't just stop at the level of sharing and say, oh, the power of God is moving, it's moving. Then one lady now starts rolling around. That, 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 you won't go far that way. You get to a church where it's the ushers that are producing that kind of result. They can't invite you. You must stay with him. Let something from heaven that cannot be faked come upon your life. Remember my teaching on true riches. That, that you have true riches. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. That means you don't have anything to tell Bill Gates. That means you don't have anything to tell Dangote. If God plans a meeting for me with Angote now. What do I have to tell him? God will give you breakthrough. He will look at you and say, what are you saying? There are churches I have gone to, brothers and sisters, with all humility, you will know that the least person in that church is still rich. There are churches I have gone to. You say, may God bless you. They just say, amen. Because they don't, they, 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 God, they, that prayer has been answered. They are looking for something more. What will a king be looking for? What was Sheba looking for when she came to Solomon? Was it what money could buy? Did she not come with gifts that money could buy? I, I pray for you. May God put something on your life that money cannot buy. I say it again. In the name that is above all names. May my God put something upon your life. 
that will make you extremely valuable. Please sit down. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let me show you how people defy being ignored. My house is full of wrappers for my mother. My dear wonderful mother, partaker of value. Are we together now? These guys, a year ago, were student doctors. Nobody was paying them. But because they had been valuable intellectually now, they received salaries. Someone has been complaining that they fired him from railway corporation since 1996. Till tomorrow, he didn't reinvent himself to be relevant to a world. It's not enough to be a graduate. You must be available and you must be usable. Many graduates are not valuable. They are just educated. To be educated and to be valuable are two different things. To be valuable means to be needed and useful. To be valuable means to not be easily replaceable. I can cook. Like who? I like my food. Are you the only one who will eat it? I can preach. I'm a man of God. I can sing. You mean you can sing? Yes. God gave me songs. Okay, sing something less here. And you stand and you are twisting your tongue around and the, the preacher sings more than you. Why should he invite you when you can sing too? I listened to a particular gospel artist. Um, I think it was yesterday night while I was about to sleep. And I was so blessed. I said, Kai... This man is anointed. I truly see why people seek for him. Value. You see, if I were not anointed the way God anointed me, you will think I'm teaching you value simply as a way of excusing the need for anointing. Because that's what many spiritual people, those, especially those of us who are called into the ministry of science and wonders, we place very little value on these matters. We think they are lesser matters. And so we are the ones who keep rising alone. Whereas those who are... You see, I, I, I fear God and I have conscience. If I'm the only one rising in this ministry, I am failing. No. Your rising is proof that I am rising. If someone gives me 10 naira today for being valuable, I turn and look at you. Have they given you one naira? If they've given you one error, we rejoice together. That the sower and the reaper rejoice together. But where I'm collecting 200 naira, and you are there saying to apostle, this thing you are teaching, it means something is wrong. Either with me or with my doctrine. Are we together? The worship team, for years, I didn't allow them to go and have external ministrations. Many of them didn't understand that. They would say, ah, we have been invited somewhere. I say, you are not going anywhere. Not with what you did on Friday. You are not going anywhere. You do that kind of thing, it's only in Zaria they will invite you. You will never go outside Zaria. Stay. But today, by the grace of God, God has walked on them. And these gentlemen are singing songs that people are singing, not only in other parts of this nation, but even outside this nation. It's called value. When you decide to be small in life, you are going to be angry. Because most of the people who will rise will be people you know. You will be very, very angry. There are many angry people. There are people who used to know me years ago. Just like my dear brother would say. You know, most people, I, I returned back from Kano yesterday. Very tired, very this, but most people say, ah, Apostle, I call, is it that you don't know me? I know you, but... The way life has presented itself is, is such that you have to just be patient with me. Apostle, before, in 2000, one dial and you will pick. Abba, for 18 years I wasn't doing anything with my life. Value. When you see me settling down to study, you will not know that I'm a man of God. 
I, Daniel, understood by books. Sit down and study. Sit down and learn. The average sermon as a man of God takes serious time. I preach an average of two to three sermons every week. You think it just drops from heaven just because I told... God gave me the topic. He didn't teach me what to say. What gives you topic and gives you wisdom? You go and sit down and research and learn. Are you valuable enough? Listen very carefully. I want you to ask yourself that question honestly. I'm not saying are you valuable. You are. But are you valuable enough to bring to your life the kind of influence? Are you valuable enough worth following? Can someone follow you and know that I'm following something superior? The guy who sang this song, E. Daniels, is a blind guy. I didn't even know he was blind. Went to minister somewhere with him. Blind gentleman. And my goodness, when this guy climbed the stage and held on to his guitar, with my two eyes, I still cannot play what that guy was playing. Songs from the Spirit, backed up by extreme skill. This guy was playing and playing, and I said, what is this? We were on our way to Kano. We were just listening to songs. And when it got to his song, I just kept quiet. The whole car was just filled with the presence of God. Value. But someone whose eyes, are, whose eyes can see and will not do anything and is waiting for God to do this. Let me tell you this. If you are a parent here, let me advise you. Especially for your, male, your, your sons. Start training them to be responsible early in life. Sometimes this dashing, excessive dashing of money and things is why many young men are lazy. Pain is a language that can teach people. Money is not the only thing you should give people. You can give them advice. They don't like advice. They don't like counseling. But they like something they can hold and exchange immediately. Be valuable. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, every area that God would have me function in, I will be extremely valuable. Average is terrible because you are neither here nor there. I'd like you to enter a covenant with yourself that whatever I know there is grace for me to do, I will be, I will be the best and I will not rest. If you tell me you want to go into the academia, and you just stop at MSc or BSc, I know that you are not going to have a voice. There are people here who are lecturers in the academia. Pastor Alpha, I think he just, he just did his, his externals and all of that. And a number of people here. You shouldn't stop till you become a professor. I'm not called into the academia. So you find the professor version of what God called you to do. That's the thing I like with Hausa people. Even if you tell them to peel orange, they become so professional when they stand and they are peeling that orange. They peel it in a way and manner that wants you to go back to them. Mastery. Rewards are for masters. Entry level in life is how you suffer. You never make any relevance being at entry level. A time will come where everybody around you is great. May the great call you great. When the great call you great, you are great indeed. But you must walk. Write it on your note. I receive grace to be diligent. The anointing does not cover for the place of hard work. See, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm using myself and it looks like pride. Forgive me. But if at this level I'm still working hard and you are sleeping, you are joking. Let me inspire you. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm being careful to use myself so you don't think that if at this level I've not gone to bed and at the level you are, you are sleeping. It's a sign that you are far from influence. I have food to eat. I can eat whatever I want to eat. But then you are still awake. Shakatos kabarakatosh. New dimensions, oh God. New levels, oh God. I come back from a meeting. I came back from police academy. They gave me this, their police, uh, this uh, police thing. Two of it. That's thing that they wear. I told them I'm an affiliate policeman. 
you can have that and hang it and start sleeping and remain there until the world moves ahead of you and then you wonder why don't people listen to me again they say because you stop being relevant you see let me tell you this as we are sitting now if someone starts shouting under the anointing you won't be impressed because you have already seen that standard in me there will be an appetite in you for what more when that happens in another meeting you'll be surprised but what will bless it will only bless visitors but you who is in koinonia here now once someone starts shouting under the anointing and moving around you don't turn and say hey what is happening no when you have hit a standard that standard people get used to it and that's all you must try for something more that's why when they say holy 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 when they lift their face they see another dimension of god who was who is and who is to come if you are who was you are in trouble if you are who is you will soon be in trouble there must also be something to come that was is and is to come dimension must work in your life if i only know he who was businessman who was apostle who was what are you doing now relative to what god is doing and what are you doing tomorrow will our little children need you or will you be so irrelevant they say i don't know why you people like this man i'm i'm telling you things that many of you will not hear easily value I will be wicked to not teach you this. This is what I'm doing in my own life. I have reaped the fruit of value in a way that if God never blesses me again, I am grateful. Sometimes I find myself in circles and places and I just nod my head. I said, ah, who dash monkey banana? If not because of the blessings of value. You will be so valuable when you get to the corridors of power you will stand and wonder and say lord is this what you can do they will come and find you with a big bed but you are crying on the ground and they say sir you should be lying down on this bed he say no don't worry i'm lying down on the ground because what god has done for me too much oh too much oh too much, oh, excess love, oh. What's the song again? Love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. Listen. This is what many of us are going to use to break the barriers that are in our families. Some of you, your family has not risen anywhere. And all of you are educated. You see, let me tell you this. I want to tell you something that is very uncomfortable. There is no such thing as being educated in our world today. You are either learning or you are out. Educated in terms of formal education is wonderful. But educated to mean I have gathered enough information to make the world hear me is pride. You are joking. If a professor is still reading, writing articles, doing researches, and you just come out, a, a degree right now is almost like, I, I told you about a place that I went to, that the receptionist had two MSCs abroad. Receptionist. Gone are the days where you brag and say, look, I have a degree in A, I have another degree in B. And someone will come who is 18 years and say, I have four degrees. And you stand there feeling foolish. But there is something you can have in both your mind and your spirit that can give you a place, that can take away shame. Brothers and sisters, shame and reproach can leave a man. When you stay with God that he puts something upon your life, financial shame can leave your life sociological shame can leave your life you never go somewhere and they look at you and say you are not fine let your mind add to your beauty let your value add to your beauty oh you are too short you are too tall you are too fat you are too slim value can make you fit for everything a door that will not open because they will say you are too tall value will reduce you to enter a door that will say you are too short value will make you taller to enter 
You have taken all my shame. You have taken all my sorrows. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all the pain. You have made them yours. I praise to the King. You have taken all my tears. You have taken all lamentation. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all the weakness. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. Listen, God wants to make this song someone's reality. That you turn and say, Lord, look at how you took away shame from my family. Lord, look at the embarrassment. I'm a man of God. I am called into ministry, but it's like I am not called. But look what you have put upon my life today. I have become Beulah and Hephzibah, the desire of nations. Look what you have done with my family. My mother that was nothing, my brother that was nothing. They kept saying, can anything good come out of my family? But Lord, look what you have done. You have taken me from a donkey. Father. Value. Sit down. Let me give you four four things that you should cry for. There are seven of them, but I'll give you four. <laughs> they are called the true riches of the kingdom. I want to teach you what buys money, what buys influence. Influence is a product. It is bought with something. I want to show you the capital that buys influence. Ready? Number one, the capital of light. Light is capital. Illumination, revelation. We use light to buy money as a product. We use light to buy influence. For it is the light that shineth in darkness. Light is capital. Whoever has light can buy anything money can buy. Are we blessed? Number two. The second capital that you need that can buy other things. Listen very carefully and never forget this. I'm only going to give you four. The second, that light, understanding. Write it down. Understanding. The comprehension of the systems of the kingdom. When you have this, you have something money cannot buy. Are we together? Are you ready for the third capital? The third capital is the ability to hear God. If anybody ever told you the ability to hear God is not value, he lied to you. Mm. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind thee saying, 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 this is the way. People prosper in life because the Lord is their shepherd. And if the sheep cannot hear the voice, you will go where the lion is. The forest is a place that is open for every other animal, not just the sheep. It's the shepherd that guides them in the path of righteousness. Otherwise, the sheep can veer off a land that you go and meet a prey that eats you up. The ability to hear the voice of God correctly is value. Let me give you the fourth one. I have a series. That's why I'm not giving you all of it. There's a series, Two Riches. Before the end of the year, we'll teach it. So that you will stop chasing money. You will chase what buys money. I taught you last week. Please come, sir. Give me this water. Come here, Jimmy. Look at this. If this is... I, I have, let, let me bring out some money. This is a product called a bottle of water. Is that true? I don't know how much they sell this, but... You just hold it. Now, if a Jimmy wants this, he needs to have something that can buy it. So if I give you money, you have bought this product. But when you want this, what buys it? 
If this is the product you want, what buys it? A job? <laughs> Business? No. True riches is the name of the money that buys money. Are we together? It's true. Whoever possesses light must possess this. Whoever possesses understand, he said, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Business or job are simply physical platforms to give the two riches you possess an avenue for expression and a coordinated system for being rewarded. That's all they are. So if all you have and all you are looking for is this, you are going to be a slave to your destiny forever. That's what is happening to many of us now. Anywhere money is, is where you are running to. The money itself is running somewhere. Find out where it is running to. Don't just follow money. Follow where money is going. This money that is running away is going somewhere. Where is it going? It's going to those who possess true riches. Either gotten by occultic powers or gotten from the secret place. When God wants to prosper men, he doesn't give them money. It's an insult if God gives you money. Why will he God give you money? God gives you true riches and compels a territory to identify with that. And you will have this and not know what to do with it. And find out that this is the least of your concerns. He will give you influence that will make people think you have a charm. Why do people want to hear you? It's because there is something in your life that cannot be bought in the supermarket. Value. Are we together now? Thank you. You drop it in the offering basket or something. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. The last of them is the anointing. Let me tell you this. The highest manifestation of true riches on earth is the anointing. The highest. Higher than all others that have called. The anointing is the highest spiritual commodity available for purchase and use on the earth. In heaven, the anointing is not the highest. Because we see in the throne room, all the people in the throne room, we don't hear the mention of anointing. So there are things higher than the anointing in heaven. But on earth, the anointing, the valued cherub and the rest, all of them, they don't live in the throne room. They visit the presence of God with the anointing. That means there is something those 24 elders have. There is something those four living creatures have that is not anointing. We will find out. But for now, as given to us, it says the yoke, it shall come to pass in that day. Listen carefully. That the yoke shall be taken from off your shoulder and the burden from your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. When God wants to use men on earth, he gives them the highest value. The anointing. He can give them in the secret place and they come out in the open and life starts following them. Where did this shepherd boy, David, smelling sheep but with the anointing? Don't ever ignore a man who has the anointing. He has true riches. It may not look like it. That's why those who seek God, people will say, don't see God, don't see God. Balance. What they mean balance is leave God. Don't leave God, oh. You leave the anointing, you suffer in this life. Takes the anointing. The rich are oppressed too. The poor are oppressed. Money cannot buy that. Money can't buy the salvation of your soul. Money can buy Panadol. But it cannot cast away demons. So whoever has that ability. Ah. You have taken all my shame. You have taken all my soul. You have taken all my pain. You have taken all limitations. You have made them yours. Highs praise to the King. Koinonia, listen to me. Do you know what you are receiving every week you come and sit down here? You are not just receiving information. There is a transfer, like you do internet transfer. Something is coming on your life. You see, as you keep receiving that, a time will come, you will come out. My brother, my sister, 
regardless of all other limitations in your life you will stand in shock when you see those waiting to see you and you look at their chariots full of gold and silver and they say let it be a privilege someone's prayer point of 10 years your your savings plan of 20 years the anointing brings it in one day Let me tell you something that you don't hear me say all the time. And I say this with due respect and honor. Over 70% of those who partner with this ministry are not here. I don't know them. Are we together? Our ministry is full of, a lot of young people. And God is helping you all. You are rising. But many of us are not yet there. It will be a terrible thing to begin to yoke you with the bills that run this ministry when the finance department brings me the bills and i look at it sometimes i'm surprised i'm like what this is what one department is spending per month but by the finger of god when he gives you two riches it's like a charm look at elisha now man what are you doing in front of my house how about elisha come out respect me he said who is leprous me or you go and bath seven times he said, respect it while he's talking that jargon. You can choose to remain. Ah, when you have two riches, you command life at your terms. You see, when we talk like this, many young people think it's because we are lucky to have been anointed. No, sir. The anointing is a stream of income. Whoever told you the anointing is not important. Whoever mocked and scorned at the anointing. The Bible said, those, those that do wickedly against the covenant, God will corrupt with flatteries. They look at these ordinances and say, don't worry, it doesn't matter. When people talk, look at their results first before you believe them. Don't be a victim of someone's learning process. Then when he corrects himself, you have swallowed up his error and there is no room to correct yourself. Are we together? Sir. Value. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, hey. Yahweh. you must know God. Two, be transformed. Three, be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. You want to contend for kingdom influence, you must master relationships. Not just have relationships, you must master relationships. Everything in the kingdom reproduces on the basis of relationships. If you do not understand relationships, you are not going far in life. What are relationships? I've taught you. They are advantageous connections. Listen very carefully. We call a human being an organism because there is a relationship between every organ, every system, every tissue, every cell. They are connected in some way and they form an organism. Split all of them and keep them around. The bones in the valley of Ezekiel were not an army, although the bones were there. They had to be connected to be an army. Are we together now? If you do not know how to master relationships, then you will never rise to certain levels of influence in business, in ministry, etc. Relationships. Write, please. Let me give you a few things to write and then we'll pray. Is God challenging us tonight? Please be challenged, though. Please be challenged. 
Relationships are advantageous connections. Write it down, please. I've taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. Just like the anointing, relationships are a stream of income. Relationships can bless you. When you are connected to the right people, you can live off that relationship. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for it too. But there is a price. There is a price for mastering relationships. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, can two walk together? Two anything, two people, two, even anything. Can, can your systems walk together except they agree? If the mouth is opening and the legs say, I must move too, there will be trouble somewhere. There is a system of coordination in your body. Right? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Many of us have not mastered valuable relationships. And that's why we never rise. We are born again. We are anointed. But the system for multiplication in our life is not there. So we are just seeds. We never become a harvest. Because we are not connected. It is the relationship between a man and his wife that produces another being. There must be a relationship between your seed and something else to produce more of what you want. You alone carrying the seed of greatness within you cannot make a forest of greatness. You will need another entity that the seed will cause another multiplication. Plants know this. Animals know this. But we don't know this with respect to a life of great influence. Are we together? Relationships. You saw the wife of my dear friend, Pastor Petrock, when she came in here, I took out time to appreciate her. Do you know why? Because he's my friend and I love him. Because she's my friend and I love her. They're wonderful people. They host me so well every time I have the opportunity to be in Mina and they give me their very best. They have honored me so much and I reciprocate it. It's a relationship that we maintain. Are you seeing that now? The, the pastor said when he came here, he saw the workers walking. Do you know because there is a relationship? I love the workers. I don't use them. I love them and they know I love them. The person who should bless and lift your life, do you have a relationship with him? It's amazing how people just want the anointing to come to them. Who do you think you are? No. No. Without venison between Jacob and Isaac, there is no blessing. Venison there doesn't mean food or money. Venison is a system of honor. He said, I want to bless you, but as you are now, I'm going to waste my time. Do something. Create a system of honor between me and you. And you are going to receive something on me. Relationships are powerful. You must learn to master relationships. Relationships don't maintain themselves. I've told you this here, but write it again. All the parties involved must be committed to maintaining themselves. Last year during my birthday, my pastor friend in Lagos, Pastor Shola, they brought a big cake and kept it in front of a big church as if they are idolizing a man. And we're singing happy birthday. I'm here in Zaria and a church in Lagos keeps a big cake to celebrate a man. I don't know how many of my friends have called me now and said, Apostle, come to our region and I want to celebrate your birthday. I said, no, 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 please. I, I have phobia for celebrations and all of this. I'm just, just pray for me and eat the cake on my behalf. Relationship. I can tell you why there's nobody to help you when there's trouble. Because you don't care about anybody. You care about yourself through people. Listen carefully. You care about who? Yourself. Only that you route it through people. When you love people genuinely and you care for them and you show them love, you will see how they will kill themselves to defend what you represent. Are we together? Many anointed people are lonely. There's nobody to speak for them and say, there is a man of God we know here. The hand of God is upon his life. He can be invited here. Who are you connected to? Enough to help you rise. 
Is God speaking to us? A tree only grows because it's connected to the earth. Fruits only remain because they are connected to the branches that are connected to the vine, that is connected to the root, that is connected to the ground. When your mouth throws food, if other systems don't cooperate with it, you can die. I'm not a doctor, but I'm smart enough to know. Are we together? Look at how the systems play. They patiently wait for the mouth to receive the food. Then other systems start playing. Life is systemic. Never forget this. A human being with no respiratory system is almost not a human being. He's dead. There are people that can have one part of their body working and another part not. You see the limitation in their lives. Are we together? Do you have valuable relationships today? If someone decides to come and oppress you, is there a voice that can speak for you? If the devil tries to oppress you, is there somebody you are connected to that you can say, in the name of Jesus, this will rise for me? <gasps> I saw one of our dear babies. I can't wait for the service to finish. Let me give her a very big hug. I was in school of ministry when they brought her. She was so sick. When I saw that dear lady, I saw her adorable baby. The way I hugged her, I prayed for her. I said, Pastor Alpha, please immediately take her to the hospital. They took her there, treated her and all of that. What if I did not know Pastor Alpha? What if we did not know someone in the hospital? What if that girl just dies like that? Then we say, how can I leave Syria? No relationships. Is there somebody you know that you can actually go to now and he will give you money? Not borrowing. Not borrowing. Not everybody is greedy. Sir, I stand before you. I'm trusting God. This is it. My child's school fees. And he says, take because we are related. Look, if you don't have these help structures in your life, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. Are we together? And if your friends are only Christians, you are still in trouble. Because you live in a heterogeneous world where many Christians, their hands cannot reach the table of influence that you need help from. So you will need to be especially good to those of the household of faith, but be good to all men. The people that transport you here, I don't know how many Christians there are from them. We have never had an occasion to fight. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, they are Muslims, but we love them. We always do things for them. That's why they can come sometimes, they may be here by now, and wait for over 30 minutes, one hour, and they pick you. Relationships. Are we together? Who you are related. Let me tell you this. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you matters. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you in this kingdom. I told you that there are men who you cannot cast out of your life. If God wants to bless you, he will make them like you. But for as long as they don't give you access, you are not going anywhere. There are gates. When God wants to prosper you and the work of your hand, you don't fight them. God touches their hearts to like you. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. If you want to enter Aso Rock now, whether you like Buhari or not, you are, you are not going to enter out Aso Rock without him. So if God wants you to enter Aso Rock, he will make him like you. Then you enter Aso Rock. Not everything is bindable. That's why there is favor. So that the ones that can't be bound, favor will maneuver away in flow. You must write, if you treat everybody the same in your life, the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. Everybody cannot be the same in your life. Some of us have this socialist view about life. Everybody is the same. The one who pays your school fees and the one who greets you in the morning, they are the same. The one who prays for you, the one who fasts for you, they are all... In your world, there is no stratification based on value and honor. No. Jesus had three. He had 12. He had 72. He had 5,000. He had all kinds. Don't give everybody equal access to your life. Let them qualify for access through their participation over your success. I love everybody, but not everybody is at the level, uh, same level of relationship. 
Is God helping us and are we learning? Please say amen. amen. Some of you are praying right now. The answer to your prayers is in a relationship. Oh God, when will this rent go? And God is saying you better take the law of honor seriously. The law of honor can pay you a rent for 10 years. The law of honor can buy you a car. The law of honor can bring an anointing to your life. You don't insult a man and when you see him, you just say, Sean, sir, sorry, I was just thinking before you pass, you just quickly impart my head. It doesn't work like that, sir. Your sarcasm is already a witness before the justice system of God as to why that anointing should not flow to your life. It doesn't matter whether the man of God lays hands on you or not. There are men of God in my life I will never be offended in. If I hear today that they said Joshua Selman is a devil, Joshua Selman is this, I will still love them and honor them. Your connection is how you rise. Learn this. Learn this. I told you Bishop Oedipo's advice that he gave the young minister when he was starting, Pastor Correde, he said, never fight alone. Many of us are fighting alone. No. There must be an alliance in your life for you to prosper. That's why we have something called United Nations. That's why we have something called African Union. Is that true? It's a coalition of people. What relationship is in your life today? I shared this with us already, but let me just run through it. How to maintain relationships. Let me give you seven points very quickly in succession. Number one, avoid competitive jealousy. Sorry, I'm rushing. There's already a series on mastering relationships. Get it. You can never relate with people when there is competitive jealousy. You bought this, I must buy too. You have this, I must have too. You are anointed. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Number two, avoid gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. You never connect with people when you walk in gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. Never practice that. Number three, very quickly, avoid offense. Offense is the ease with which you get irritated. Offense is the ease with which you get angry. Offense is the ease with which you get resentful. Settle it once and for all that everyone you relate with is not perfect, just like you. So settle it once and for all that imperfection will be featured once and again in your relationship. But let that be too small a reason to cause you to lose the precious things that are associated with relationships. Are we together? Avoid offense. Four, practice forgiveness. It's not enough to not be offended. You must practice forgiveness. Any kind of relationship thrives on forgiveness. There are times you just need to let go and ignore what they thought, what they said, what they did. Just, just let it go. Are we together? Number five, be tolerant. Have a high degree of tolerance. You want to maintain relationships, you must be tolerant. Let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness may be an error or a mistake or a weakness that you hope will not happen again. Tolerance is a weakness enshrined in that person that is, is bound to happen again. <laughs> you know, when people are going to get married, a guy loves a lady and he offends her and she says, promise me you will never do it. And the foolish guy has the effrontery to promise that he will never do it again. Whoever told you you would never do it again? You shouted at me. I don't like it. I'm sorry. This is the last time. I don't know what came over me. You plan to live for 50 years? <laughs> You shouted at your mother. You shouted at your father. You shouted at God. God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And you are here lying just because you want to stand at the altar with a lie. I will never shout. In fact, from... No, no, no. I'm not saying be angry and be foolish. That's, it's not an endorsement for being foolish. I hope you, you understand the balance. But that the wise wife or the business partner or whoever must know that there is a propensity for this. So I must create a system of accommodation. It's called tolerance. Thank you. Tolerance. There are people I already know that certain things are ever present with them. I've already factored in. in. Are we together? Some friends, some different people. I already know that some things will never change. 
There are people connected to me. I know I'll continue giving money all the time. I will never even bother doing any lecture on finance. It's a total waste of time. Some of us, they are our relatives. You know it. You, you, there's no point saying, look, everybody be empowered. You are wasting your time. Just trust God to be empowered very well and create a system around your life that helps them. You will buy sewing machine today. You will buy bicycle tomorrow. You will buy uh, two cows, male and female. The person will sell the other one before six months. There are people who you can't do anything. You need them. They are just careless. You can advise them. They sit down. They are writing. They stand up by next week. They've done exactly what you said they shouldn't do. So you don't forgive. You tolerate. That's not forgiveness. Is God speaking to us? Practice tolerance. Number six. Be a contributor to the growth of the relationship. This is a key one. Very soft what I'm teaching tonight, but it's important. No relationship grows in, indefinitely without a very significant contribution from the parties involved. You cannot continue to be a parasite indefinitely. No. It is not only financial or material things you can give. You can give prayer. You can give a good word. You can do something with your skill. Are we together? You can't be in a relationship with come David Dam. You can't be in a relationship with David Dam and every time you are saying, Ah, David Dam, you are going for ministration. Remember me. Oh, if they give you your God, I beg, leave half for me. It can't be indefinite like that. One day David Dam will say, Look, the level of of intimacy you want requires definition of what you are bringing to the table. Because the level of intimacy you require is not the general, well-meaning. You want me to remember you while away. What are you bringing? And then you say, okay, I know that you usually get thirsty, so I found where to fetch water for you. You see that? I know that demons attack you frequently, so I've said I pray one hour for you every day. That's a contribution. Listen, let me advise especially couples, whether you are about to marry or you are married, insist that you must know what you are bringing to the table. Don't generalize because the husband or the wife is nice. Children, you too, don't just say you gave birth to me. You have to. When you get to a certain age, you should be a contributor. Even if it's not finances, you can clean the chair, you can weed the grass. There's nobody under my roof who will not do anything. No. You can't sleep and wake up and eat and sleep and wake up. If you don't pray, you will clean something. If you don't clean something, you must dress something. If you don't dress, you must go on errand. There is nothing that is neutral. Are we together? Any cloth in your life that is not serving you, give it away. Any book you are not reading and you are not going to read, give it away. Let everything in your life be based on contribution. And you will see how your life will rise. Even in your relationship with God, He spelled the terms. He told you the things you will get. I will manifest myself to you. He will anoint you. He will bless you. When they give you a job, they give you your letter of employment. Therein He spelled the terms of your relationship. We do that for every other thing except relationships. Why should Pastor Alpha continue to love Pastor Femi? Why should Pastor Femi continue to love Pastor Alpha? Why should I continue to love you? I've noticed that people don't like me. Have you noticed it too? The person, yes, I noticed people don't like you. It's a message. One, you may not be valuable, but two, you want relationships that you are largely making parasitic. You are not contributing. I had headache, you didn't call me. When I had my own, did you call me? No. Are we together? Someone has to go out of his way to make relationships work. Be a contributor to the growth of the other party. And then seven, the last one, and we'll stop there. I never knew we'd have to get part three for this. Um, but then practice genuine love practice genuine love let me tell you this one of the most painful thing in a relationship is to discover for someone to discover come promise if i love promise and promise eventually finds out that all the while i really didn't love him i just had somewhere to go 
and I found out that he can help me get there. So I was nice to him within the period of getting there. Is one of the ways great relationships die. I've seen this happen with pastors. I've seen this happen with business people. Ah, hey, Jimmy, I love you. Morning, he's calling a Jimmy. Night, he's calling a Jimmy. Next week, he's calling a Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, will I see you next week? And then a door just opens. And there's no a Jimmy again. Because it was never about a Jimmy. It was about me through you. Is your friendship genuine? Or are you just looking for something through people? Is God speaking to us now? Yes. Do I love you so much? I know how much I love you by how much I can be willing to stay even when nothing is coming from you. There are ladies who started relationships with men just because they are looking for daily bread. And the day the guy just said, Kai, this bread that I sell, something thieves just came and carried one whole bag of the flour of this. You call again and it's, it's number busy because you want to prosper through a man. What of brothers that is just food they are looking for? Because you don't cook. You found out that a sister's hand has been blessed. And all of a sudden, how are you? It's two days. I've not seen you. Abba. And uh, she said, in fact, I was even thinking of bringing her. Said, now you are talking. And then the day she tells you that, look, um, sorry, the money to cook is not there. You say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing into God. I'm busy. I don't have time for things of the world again. Our world is such a selfish place. Listen, if you ever want to rise through influence, there must be a track record of your genuine love for people. I love Pastor Peter genuinely. I love his wife genuinely. I love all my pastor friends genuinely. Just like many of them love me genuinely. I know you love me genuinely, some of you. Many of you, but not all of you. It can't be all of you. I'll be fooling myself. But I know that at least you love me genuinely. You can be sure that I love you genuinely. I know Jesus loves me genuinely. Is that true? At least, it's, I know Satan doesn't love me, but I know Jesus loves me. I know my little children here love me. They love me more than you by far. Let me tell you. Your relationship life is intact when children love you. I've told you this. If children run away from you, it's a sign that there is a presence your understanding is creating. Because children are too innocent to run away from you. I love Jesus. Not just because the Bible tells me so. I love him because he has proven it again and again. And he's poured that same love. I love you. With all my heart. Do you look at all the relationships in your life today? Which one are you using and which one is real? Hello? We are going to pray. I want you to look at all the relationships in your life today. Which one do you know from beginning that is just a means to an end, not an end in itself? This guy is a prayer warrior. Let me just use him to scatter this because... On my own, I won't reach that gate. I've already seen the giant that stands. So let me partner with him. Let me use his voice to open that gate. That's why many of us are not there for those we claim to love when they are down. It's so painful for people to claim to love you. And when you are down, there's nobody there for you. There are many of our people who are getting married here and there. There are people who say they love them and never bring five naira. I promise you are getting married. Take ten naira. Hey, may the Lord honor you. You know this God that we talk about. You don't love. When you love, you give. You don't give money alone. You give any and everything. Hallelujah. It's true. One of my greatest prayers is for God to help me to continue to love people. It's one of the keys I have found to the anointing remaining and multiplying upon my life. You can be dissipating spiritual energy in prayer and word study and not have love the bible says you are an empty symbol you must genuinely have love not just for god but for me i love god genuinely ask him he will tell you i don't love god because i'm looking for tea i don't love god because i'm looking for bread i don't relate with him just because i want him to meet my needs if i were doing that then there are many things i would not maybe i would just be praying once a week on friday lord bless koinonia thank you 
Thank you because there's already rice on my table for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Bless Koinonia. But I love him. I still go back to his presence and say, Lord, I've come again. You are my desire. You are my pursuit. You are my everything. Many of you, it's your relationship with God that went sour, that made everything in your life to go sour. The first relationship to be restored is your relationship with God. Then your relationship with those that God has ever used to bless you. If God used them once, He can use them again. Do all you can to preserve the relationship. Do all you can. There are times I send many people text messages. Just like you don't get replies from me sometimes. I don't get replies from them. But I'm not offended because I know they are busy. The most important thing is that I play my own part to make sure the relationships are there. Maintaining relationship is costly. Maintaining relationship with great men is costlier. Maintaining a relationship with God is the costliest of them all. Because it can cost you your life. You can even die. You will lose a lot of things relating with God. But you will gain a lot of things. You want to relate with people and not lose anything. You are selfish. You must lose something to stay. What are you willing to lose? You must lose your time to gain something. You must lose your time with God to gain the anointing. You must lose your time. There are times that you will have to lose your ego to sit down before an uncommon mentor and hear him talk to you. There are times you will need to lose your appetite. You are hungry, but the person talking to you has not finished. You must sit down there and sit down for as long as he's talking. relationships God has used relationships to lift me today I can't tell you you know sometimes I don't even want to share I like being myself but I don't want to share testimonies because they are very touching I'm being very sober with you tonight because I want you to know this is how we gain influence relationships somebody told somebody about a message that blessed you somebody met somebody and gave him a koinonia message that brought you even to jesus somebody told you about jesus even if he's an angel he came as angelos a messenger to connect you let's finish it give me five minutes let's not allow it go to part three number five and we end for tonight you want to contend for kingdom relevance you must be unusually anointed the last key you must be unusually anointed if you are just anointed you will not do much you must be unusually anointed to such a degree and such a level that you can do many things for the kingdom through the anointing that is upon your life. Listen, brothers and sisters, those who are generalists in the anointing, generalists, will not do anything much. You will keep competing. One result today, no result tomorrow. One this today, no. Every time they invite me to go for ministrations, I am very happy because I know what the anointing is going to do to the people. It's going to change their lives. Those of you who are first timers who have come here now, I'm happy because while you are sitting, something is happening to you. You will get up and go back and wonder. It will look like a dream, the way God will turn your life around. Nothing just happens. Koinonia, I will drum this into your life. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. It first starts from what is in you. Then it comes to what is upon you. Then it brings things around you. If there is nothing upon you, creation will be so harsh to you, you will feel like dying. Is that true? Unusual anointing. The difference between any two people is not the God they believe in. The difference between any two people may not even be the revelation they are sharing. The difference between their results, hence their influence, will almost always be the level of grace. When you see what I'm doing, 
and you see what Benihin is doing, it's not like he's using a different Bible from me. The difference is the level of anointing. The difference may not even be the dimension of the anointing. It's just the level of it. The difference between 1,000 Naira and 10,000 Naira is nine more 1,000s. Is that true? Sometimes what you need is just more of the same thing. You may not need anything new. Unusually anointed. Unusually anointed. And it will take you places you never dreamt you will go to. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, beloved in the Lord. I bring you the keys for transgenerational relevance. The highest of them is to be unusually anointed. When you are unusually anointed, then you are a blessing. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. When I say anointing, I don't just mean people falling on the floor shouting, ah, 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 ah. That, that's not anointing. Results. The ability to manipulate realities over people. Create a spiritual climate over a man that turns his life around. The anointing. I say to one, go, and he goeth. I say to another, come, and he comes. Immediately after the grace, there will be several people lining up here to see me. And many of them have issues. Whether I'm able to solve those problems is a different thing. How many people have come to you and you could not do anything about their situations? It's not like you are not anointed, but you need to operate at a higher level. A higher level. A higher level. That must be your cry. A higher level. Thank God for where he has brought you. But my brother, my sister, at this level of anointing, the nations will not demand your grace. At this level is your local environment that will demand your grace. At this level of the anointing, you need a level of anointing that will cause all men to seek for you. As it is now, all men cannot seek for you. But all men seek for you. We are going to pray. I want you to be relevant. I have taught you the keys. Number one, you must know God. Number two, you must contend for transformation. Number three, you must be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. Even beginning from here, there are people you need in life and destiny. Swallow your pride. Bury your ego. And maintain the requisite relationships it will take. So that when you are great and when they are great, even if you are not there, they will pick you through their greatness. Number five, be unusually anointed. The highest of the two riches. When it comes upon your life, then you will find out that principalities and powers will bow. You will find out that all men will seek for you. They will seek for the deposit of his grace that is upon your life. At that point, you will never beg for bread again. At that point, your voice cannot be silenced again. There is no cause and no yoke that will ever silence your voice. Are you ready to pray tonight? We are going to take five minutes. The prayer points are all that I mentioned. I'm just going to allow you with God for the next five minutes exactly. I want you to cry your heart in prayer and say, Lord, I want you to lift me. I want to begin to operate and activate these systems of the kingdom. Lord, I do not know you. Lord, I am not transformed. My limitation has pegged my growth to a point that I'm not able to do much. Lord, I confess that I am not valuable enough. I have flattered myself and gathered around psychophants in my life who have made me feel I'm more valuable than I really am. Lord, I have ignored relationships. I'm a man of God, but I've ignored valuable relationships. I've let my pride get in the way. I've let offense get in the way. And then, Lord, I'm anointed, but I'm not unusually anointed. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Outside pray. Those following online pray. You activate these five things. You have closed the door of mediocrity in your life forever. Doesn't matter what background you come from. Shh.
Hata Barakato Senemekata Labashia Dabaladas. Lord, I now see why poverty seems to trace and trail my life. Lord, I now see why no one is willing to listen to me. I now see why no one is willing to invest in your hand upon my life. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over, jump over. I have touched to the end of my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of my soul. Sing it with all your heart. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. I like you to pray let me give you one more prayer point and say lord i will never be small let it be a vow you make with yourself lift your voice and pray lord is a determination the bible says i will multiply them they will not be few i will glorify them they will not be small lift your voice and pray lord i make a determination in the name of jesus christ that i will never never be small there is much to do for the kingdom. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I decree and declare, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I declare the seed of greatness, for the kingdom is within me. And I declare, that church you have given me will not be small. That business you have given me, that anointing, that grace, that career, multiply my influence thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side sabakatoka prahasagate shekete katakata Speed, speed in the name of Jesus. I command everything that has refused to move in your life. I move it by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm still praying. I'm still praying. The Holy Ghost is moving you. Except this prayer is not for you. There is an anointing that must shift you. Must shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord shift them to their destinies please you will need to help the ushers whether you are an usher or not just, just help them there's only so much we can do there's no power that keeps you down this is miracle service lift your hands please I'm praying For some of you now, it's the same prayer, but it's no longer just for you. You may not be experiencing it, but your family needs speed. The anointing now is moving from individuals to families. Lord, where are the families that need the shift of the Holy Ghost? I decree and declare right now, I speak by this apostolic and prophetic grace. Families be shifted now. Speed, speed, speed. Speed, Kaparakoto Shegeta, Eprekete I decree it, I declare it. 
I decree it and I declare it. No more delay. I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord just on this road. I stretch my hands right now. I move people. God is moving people here. I decree it. I declare. I decree. I declare. I decree. I declare. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It must work for you. I shift you. No more delay in your life. This lady wearing hijab right now, the Lord is shifting you. That lady, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the anointing of the Spirit take away delay from your life right now, in the name of Jesus. now all those in front i'm praying any chain that has tied anyone's leg or any family at the count of three i speak into the realm of the spirit those chains go now one two three go 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 i lose those families now I command chains be broken now let the families be set free in the name of Jesus young lady lift your hands you you put in your hand on your mouth. Yes. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you. And the Lord is saying that he's shifting things. I'm seeing like a chain on your head being broken now. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, let that chain be broken. Let that chain. I command that devil. I'm seeing a snake in the spirit. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus. Harakatos shegepeketos. Hallelujah. Be sensitive. I want to pray a very serious prayer now. He said, Behold, I give you authority over snakes and scorpions. If you don't like the prayer and pray, no problem. But I want to pray a dangerous prayer. I'm seeing snakes. This is what I'm seeing over families. Now, let me tell you this reptilian objects is a representation of the spirit of sorcery. In the name that is above all names, I declare every spirit that has caged any family here. I decree and I declare right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus and at the count of three, everyone shout Jesus. As you shout Jesus, I see fire everywhere inside and outside. There is massive deliverance about to happen. I command every devil and every activity of sorcery to leave now. One, two, three. In the name of Jesus, I crush Satan. I crush his works inside, outside. I command every power, every force. Go now. Go now. Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. Just give me the volume. I'm seeing fire by my left and right. Just bring out all the people that fall under the anointing now. As I'm walking here. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil. You must go now. You must go now. You must go now. I declare it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. As soon as I come close to you, that fire, and there is an anointing. You can't stand it. It's impossible. As soon as I come close to you, 
as soon as I come close to you, that fire, there is a judgment. Let them go now. I'm coming this way. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is coming this area, this direction. Let them go now. Release them. I come by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let them go now. Let them go now. Release them. I'm seeing someone here tied around the stomach. Release them now. Let them go. In the name of Jesus, let them go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I stretch my hands here. Right now. The fire of God is setting people free now. Lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them, lose them now, lose them, lose them in the name of Jesus, lose them now. Those outside, lift your hands. God is about to set you free. Please, I like you to pray. Everyone pray. Enough is enough tonight. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Now listen. Overflow one, listen to me. Listen, you don't have to touch me. Please, you don't have to touch me. But in the name of Jesus, hear me. The Lord brought me out here because the time has come for something to leave someone. As soon as I pass here, I don't have to come close to you. You are going to feel fire all, all over. That fire, that will be the end of it. You must testify. Right now, I stretch my hands. Right, right now. It's over, over now. Shakos kata nika, eketo sata rikata, embreketo sheketa, akato shekriaka, manta brekotos. Let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go now. The spirit of sorcery, I curse it now. The spirit of witchcraft, I curse it now. Please help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves. Go, go, be free. I command that power by fire, by fire, by fire. It leaves you now. Those of you here, I want you to lift your hands. Overflow two. Overflow two, lift your hands. Let me go to the front there. Enough is enough. As I pass this place, listen. I want you to be very sensitive. There is a strong anointing tonight. Overflow two. Please help your neighbors. I'm only going to pass here right there. As soon as I come close to you, except God is not God. If there is any force holding you, holding your life and your ministry, it must go right now. Right now in Jesus' name, be free. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I command those devils. Go, 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 go. Kapakatoketaka. Let them go. Go. Go now. Release them. Release them. Release them. Every covenant. Release them. I break that power now. 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 Be broken. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, listen. I didn't know we have an extra overflow here. I want to pray for those by the side here. As I stretch my hands to you, please don't waste your time. I'm seeing fire already. Here. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, those of you by the roadside, one, two. Let them go by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. I declare, I decree and I declare, you are free. Praise the Lord. Overflow 3, your life is about to change. Listen. Listen. Honestly, there is, there is an anger in my spirit. Because as I entered, I'm just seeing chains everywhere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, bring all of them out. From the front to the back. 
right now at the count of three overflow three all of you shout jesus one two three every power bring them out every yoke every force every operation of darkness bring them out I'm seeing chains on people's feet. Chains, chains, chains. Be broken now. 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 Chains, be broken now. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Overflow three, lift your hands. I'm still praying. Listen. I'm seeing, I'm seeing patterns. Something that is not just happening to you alone. Happening to your father, your mother. As soon as I pray now, I'm seeing fire all over this place. Anyone under that case, you must be free now. At the count of three, anyone holding any pattern, any generational thing in the name that is above all names at the count of three one two three shout jesus bring them out that devil must let you go today my god Look at what God is doing in overflow three. Shabrakato seketes kaba, embrakato koto shabaria. Look at what God is doing in this place. Embrakete kete kete shabarukatos. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Lord is showing me. I'm coming back. But I don't know why God is, is, is on the case of overflow three. The Lord is showing me some of you. I'm seeing you are climbing a ladder. But that ladder breaks down and brings you down. You see things as if it's supposed to happen. But a force draws you back. The moment someone wants to lift you. You will have a dream in the night. And in that, in that dream. Someone will come to sleep with you. Or something will happen. Right now at the count of three. Shout Jesus. I command those devils. One, two, three. Let them go now. Let them go now. Total emancipation. Hallelujah. Jakakos kaparusi kata hasana katushia. Embrekata katos kata brekatish. Now, now. All those who are under the anointing here outside I pass a decree that every power that has held you I speak as one send at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 let them go lose your hold over their lives let them go now let them go now let them go now hallelujah I'm inside this place now and I'm standing in the spirit. I've not started impartation yet, but the Lord is showing me the number 12 and the Lord is saying there are 12 people here. There is a strong call upon your life. There is a mighty anointing. Lord, where are they? Shagatos kapakarikata. Drink of that wine. Mantekatos ketekekata. Shabrakata. A ministry of signs and wonders ministry of signs and wonders a ministry of signs and wonders a ministry of signs and wonders signs and wonders signs and wonders i'm still praying the anointing of the spirit is still locating men i don't know why god is talking about ministry the call don't run away from the call don't run from the call a ministry of signs and wonders the lord is telling someone 
you are the liberator of your family a ministry of signs 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 there are ladies here entering that ministry of signs and wonders signs and wonders hallelujah main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing i'm seeing a distribution of the healing anointing going on in the main auditorium and i stretch my hands from here it doesn't matter what overflow you just be sensitive to what god is doing main auditorium i'm seeing eight people eight people in the main auditorium at the count of three right now in the name of jesus fire will come upon your hands i'm prophesying to the main auditorium but everybody can receive i decree and declare that healing anointing one two three let that anointing come now let it come now fresh fire hallelujah listen listen i'm seeing oh my god the lord is opening my eyes here i'm i'm seeing someone don't don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed your father i don't know if i'm seeing something like a priest this is someone that worships something like an idol is in your house i'm not saying you're a bad person please i'm not saying you're a bad person you grew up seeing this happen that they worship those idols that gentleman is here in overflow three oh, oh, oh here yeah. please who is that person come i want to break that thing now from your life please quickly please make sure you hear what i say before you come just let make way for them the power of witchcraft young man you're going to be a mighty man of god i don't know you lift your hands an anointing is coming upon you now huh? it will shift you to a realm of signs and wonder or let that anointing come upon him right now in the name of jesus christ Hold my hands, my dear. The power of idols. In the name of Jesus, I break that force now. I break that force now. I break that force now. Testimony of breakthrough for you and for your family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. hallelujah i'm praying listen i stretch my hands towards you and i speak i don't know what it is that you have been involved in but in jesus name i'm stretching my hands why am i seeing fire leaving my hands who is it looking for in the name of jesus christ I command everything that is not of God be broken now. The blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. Hallelujah. Just two more things I'll do here. Whether I'm in this overflow or not, I just stood here to show you that it makes no difference. I know the larger congregation is here. Lift your hands, all of you, if you can. Just lift it as high to the heavens. Now, I'm seeing, you don't have to come out, but I'm seeing keys in the spirit. Listen, this is access to a new dimension. And I'm seeing the number 44. Just lift your hands. You don't need to say anything. Father, I stand as one sent. Those keys are locating families and locating people. It may be a key. 
that explains why things have not been working lord from the front to the back like a mighty wind whoever must receive that key receive it now receive it now receive it now in the mighty name of jesus christ let her go now out out now now this lady wearing a red hair tie in the name of jesus i'm seeing a grace that is coming let that anointing come upon you in the name of jesus christ let that anointing come upon you hallelujah overflow three i'm seen by the spirit the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the names of members of your family like written already written already i'm going to pray listen except god has not sent me as i'm praying some of you instantly the power of god will come upon you and god is going to open your eyes you are going to see victory and deliverance in fact i see a family where three of your siblings they've married none of them has a child none of them at all has a child they've done everything to do but there's no child but i stand in the name of the lord father where are those families right now like a mighty wind like a mighty wind oh god let it end right now let there be an opening let there be an opening let there be an opening in the name that is above all names let there be an opening young lady come call that lady for me call this gentleman too this man yes bring him in the name of jesus you need to be delivered i command the spirit that torments you to go now by the power of the holy ghost i release you my dear hold my hands to you i'm seeing that your life is about to change two weeks from now it will surprise you what the lord is going to do in your life i decree and i declare it over your life i stand by the anointing and i pray for you father according to your word within two weeks turn this lady's life around supernaturally in the name of jesus emeka who is emeka emeka i'm hearing a name emeka overflow three here i'm just talking to overflow three people emeka emeka please quickly please quickly don't waste that time where is that gentleman what's your name i want to pray what do you do i'm going to pray for you you are not from this place you came for nyc I want to pray lift your hands because i'm seeing look at me the lord is giving you the grace for wealth huh i want you to believe it but every prosperity that does not have an assignment to end up destroying the people you love jesus with all your heart i want to pray for you it will surprise you the way god will begin to turn things around in your life father change this gentleman's story in the name of jesus forever overflow three i'm still praying the spirit of prophecy is coming on nine people i will count four at the fourth count one two three where are they oh god four nine people nine people the spirit of prophecy the spirit of prophecy All of you open your mouth and begin to pray everything you desire overflow three open your mouth and decree open your mouth and decree i'm seeing an anointing around here who is that person i stretch my hands i'm seeing chains breaking just within this region as i'm standing here father let the chains be broken now the anointing of the spirit 
find that person let the chains be broken right now right now right now right now right now right now be broken now Please everyone pray, everyone pray, everyone pray, everyone pray. Hold on. There's someone here, the Lord is saying, I'm rolling away your shame. I'm seeing light. As I was just passing, I just saw light. Two people, let the anointing find those people now. Two people, right now, I decree. Overflow two, right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost shame reproach let it go now shame reproach let it go now shame reproach help them let it go now in the name of Jesus Christ who is Gabriel 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 I'm hearing a name who is Gabriel is there someone like that you are wearing a maroon you are wearing like maroon kaftan Gabriel maroon kaftan is there someone like that what's your name do i know you lift your hands my brother god is about to change your life god is about to turn your life around um where are you coming from i want to pray for you you love jesus what is is it oleku or aleku what is that huh huh where are you from Benway State. You are from Benway State. This is what has tied down your life and your family. I want to pray for you. I'm not a herbalist there. Eh? Father, in the name of Jesus, let this gentleman be free right now. I command that devil to leave you now. Just keep him there. In the name of Jesus. These two people, this gentleman, you, yes, and the lady by you. Come quickly. Please. Low, low, low like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. What do you do, my friend? You are a student. You love Jesus. I want to pray for you. Huh? Yes, are you together? Yes, sir. Because I saw light on you. Husband and wife? Yes, please. Well, I'm not going to discuss your issue now, but two of you need deliverance. Eh? You love Jesus, but you need serious deliverance based on what I'm seeing now. Huh? You are not husband and wife yet, but I'm seeing a lot of stories. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. You're going to be very wealthy, but the first thing you need to edit are your friends. Huh? Hear what I'm telling you. Huh? My, uh, my sister, you know what I'm saying, right? Huh? So your friends. Huh? Confirm, sir. Listen to me. You are not truly born again if your friends don't change. Hear it from me. All this born again that is one leg and you have all kinds of friends if if i am a drunkard and you are not a drunkard but we're staying together i'm close to a drunkard that means i can be implicated by everything a drunkard can be implicated by is that true so my friend you love god eh? but you see um look at what i'm doing one leg in one leg out huh don't be embarrassed when i make the altar call you need to run and come quickly jesus is not just some religious thing that you just run to just for no 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 no. Let, let's take god serious and take him look what i see my friend i see god turning your life in a way that will surprise you but friends and this is not just a message to this gentleman alone it's a message to many of us because the demons that destroy our lives walk by bringing wrong friends they make you compromise your values it's not your fault but when they come they are vocal about what they believe and because you do not have a community of like-minded believers but let me tell you the truth it matters who you listen to if the devil positions a wrong person to counsel you and they give you a counsel of a hit or fail God may be calling you to a great ministry, but you will hear a counsel that would destroy God's purpose over your life. I pray for everyone here that in the name of Jesus, if you are under the yoke of wrong friends, I stand and I speak right now. May the Lord set you free this night. In the name of Jesus Christ.
my dear there is favor on your life but it's not speaking at all hmm? you're a nice lady come i'm looking at you i'm seeing a young lady but i'm seeing the face of you and another old woman flashing me and going back see wickedness is real oh. let me tell you my brothers and my sisters wickedness is real huh this is a young beautiful lady you see her standing but you now look at it do you know let me explain something whatever overflow just listen i want to explain something you see this is the mistake that we men of god make sometimes i can look at a beautiful lady like this now and see the face of an old woman and if my word base is not sound and balanced i will i will interpret the vision i've seen verbatim and now call her a witch you see the mistake we make that we call people and then assuming now they are married i will now advise him and say mr man you married a witch oh you do you know what it means to be a witch so god is you see that god is is balancing a lot of things in our lives let's be careful because sometimes we may see a vision i already know what is happening it is true that the lady needs help but it doesn't mean imagine that i look at this lady now and say my dear, you're a witch no this is a lovely she has a beautiful heart i already see by the spirit very beautiful heart but it beauty and a good heart does not take away oppression it takes the power of god how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves so many of you are here you find out for instance the moment you enter a relationship come for instance as you mean i enter a relationship with this lady and you find out that there may be something wrong in her life and it starts affecting me have you seen that happen i'm doing well in business but just because i married this lady i start going down and now you meet a man of god and if the man if you're in ministry here please be careful you have to trust god for grace to be balanced are we together i can now look at this lady and say ah your wife is the reason behind your failure um what i'm trying to say is that oh there might be a spirit connected to her that is affecting me and the works of my hands but it doesn't mean she's bad a good man of god will bring about that separation and then through the transforming power of the word now help this couple to stand and become the best of couple because a body without a spirit is dead so it's not about condemning and destroying the body are you getting it now so my dear let me tell you you're a wonderful lady huh we are going to deal with this nonsense now this whatever it is that the devil is because this thing is affecting your life you don't know why good things don't come to you you're a very nice lady hold my hands father hold it with both of your hands i decree and declare ah halushia kaprahasku de bakatuskia i'm seeing fire leaving my hands in the name of jesus i command this devil i'm seeing through the face of this old woman be gone now my dear i set you free and i open the door of favor for you right now please everybody lift your hands i'm seeing i've not seen this in a long time i'm seeing the map of nigeria and i'm seeing an anointing going to benway state benway state now benway state you are from Benway State. You see that that power will touch you. Even if you don't know what state you are from. Benway State. Lord, where is In the name of Jesus. The power of God is bringing deliverance. Benway State. In the name that is above all names. In the name that is above all names. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. Two things. I'm seeing that the devil wants to put stroke complete stroke the devil wants to paralyze you from head to toe but we're going to destroy that now in the name of jesus hold my hands i decree and declare be free now by the power of the holy spirit madam i don't know you but ah you please come Hi. this is your first time coming i need to pray for you what do you do ma you are jobless ma Huh? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit two of your hands are tied there is nothing you do that works and prospers it's not normal you are a very good woman please don't be embarrassed I hope I'm not embarrassing you I want to pray for you 
I give you three weeks, 21 days, ma. Your life will turn around in a way that will surprise you. I lay my hands right now and I declare, I'm seeing chains leaving you. I command those chains to go. Father, turn her life around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Hold on. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I open that closed door now. I open that closed door now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everyone, open your mouth and pray. The Lord is asking me to stand here, just here, just to stand here. Because the Lord is bringing breakthrough here and here, here and here, right now, here and here. I command right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, every planting that is not of God, I uproot it now. I uproot it now. I uproot it now. Lift your voice and begin to pray, please. Lift your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know our time is gone. We are going to be very fast. Sir, you're welcome, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? Why are they here? Priest. You, sir. You are a priest? I served, my father served and died. And Sorry, where are you from, sir? I'm from Mallory. Sir, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, even the lawful captives, even the lawful captives. My brothers and my sisters, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life after this miracle service. This, this woman, come. Madam, you, yes, come. Please, quickly, come. We're out of time. Say in Jesus' name. Say it in Jesus' name. My life is about to change. Say it again. Say in Jesus' name. Reproach is leaving me now. In the name of Jesus, let it go forever. In Jesus' name. Sir, I hold your hands and in the name of Jesus, every ordinance that is not of God, help him. I command that it is broken right now. You are an elderly man. But I use you as a point of contact. We break every ordinance of darkness. This, this lady too. Priest, you? Your dad? Your father is a priest. Currently? Oh, where? Oshun State. Don't be embarrassed, eh? You are here because Jesus wants to help you. Lord Jesus, it is not your will that any man perish, but that everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth. I deliver this lady right now everything they have given you to drink and eat i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i set you free now be gone now out let it leave her i'm seeing that the father has given her so many things in her life but in the name of jesus hi jesus power is really superpower really superpower that in one moment something that has been done in a lifetime can live out now everything that is not of god a father is a priest or not her uncle direct father imagine how many times she has been involved in all of these things but in jesus name you are set free this this man too why is he here look at my eyes just look at my eyes you are receiving the healing anointing now huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, grant him access to the healing anointing, your healing power. Now, oh dear, our time is gone. This is, sometimes I honestly wish that this, this because there are so many things I see, but we have to work with time. This lady, you, come. Hurry up now, please, come. Uh, we're out of time wonderful lady look at me you are a savior to your family you hear what i said you are a savior you may look small but you are a savior to your family the only thing is that you need to continually be serious with god your heart with him your heart with him 
hold my hands father in the name of Jesus I take away distraction from her life right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I take away distraction I take away distraction Kai. we have we've not even prayed for the sequel my dear come this lady waving your hands come quickly your life is about to change come where are you coming from you are coming from Abuja I'm here with my husband husband yeah. where are you sir let's clap for the husband two of you came from Abuja Last time you came with for SOM I can't remember you came with you oh your son was a graduate of SOM no we came with him oh okay so graduate. I want to pray what do you do sir um, I'm a minister of God, but at the same time, I do business boys. So Sir, okay. I want to pray for you. Eh? Things are not working. You need the anointing. You are a sincere man. My dear, the prophetic grace is coming on you as I'm speaking now. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands. That anointing, you will start having dreams. Receive that grace. Two of you need empowerment. Ministry ministry without genuine empowerment will make it look as if you are wasting your time are you a man of god stand up stand up take that anointing now in the name of jesus you step into a new dimension i take away shame and reproach from your life and ministry from today you step into a realm of signs wonders miracles in the name of jesus can i pray for you sir look at me hold my hands hold my hands just hold it with both of your hands in the name of jesus i transfer grace signs and wonders strange testimonies your business between now and 30th of november sir your finances will change you and your wife in ways that will surprise you you will come back and testify in the name of jesus christ this man waving your hands come together with that woman by your side who is she come please two of you quickly let's appreciate them as they come oh, oh, oh. To you sir i want to pray for you ah. madam i'm looking at you you're a nice woman but i'm seeing you carrying a load huh i'm seeing you like this and i'm seeing a load on your head and if i don't pray for you this load is going to destroy you i want to pray for you where are you coming from are you new here uh, by elsa by elsa hmm. all the way i think we should appreciate them <laughs> what do you do sir I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. You are in ministry, both of you. Evangelist. My ministry is separate. Your ministry is separate, evangelist. but both of you came from yes, Bielsa. You are an evangelist. Yes. You pastor a church. Yes. How long has it been? Okay, I was uh, about four years now in Bielsa. But you were somewhere. Yes, I was in Abuja. You were in Abuja, yes. and then you left Abuja and went to Bielsa. Do you know what happened? Is it your church now you're serving someone else's church okay i want to pray for you because what i see god do through your life i'm seeing god giving you two things the grace for leadership number one number two the grace for finances these two graces god is giving it to you i don't know you sir i'm seeing you for the first time ma you are an evangelist i'm going to pray for you what do you do you hold crusades and all of that no, I, I usually have meetings every month and then I speak on radio. I have a live radio. I do my evangelical on radio and then. Oh, you do a live radio? Yes, live radio talk show. Three things one, barrenness. Two, poverty. Three, witchcraft. You are carrying the grace to smash nonsense out of these three things as you are going back. Don't forget. Huh? The same grace on you, I'm seeing it come on this lady, this one, this one, this lady I'm talking to. 
I want to pray for you. Sir, this thing is an election of grace. You see, I'm, I'm also a spectator. The same way you are watching. Me too, I'm watching. With wonder and shock, the way this thing works. That God can just change a man's life overnight. Overnight. Evangelist, my hold my hands. Father, this is a dear woman of God. All the way from Bielsa. I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I declare fresh anointing, fresh dimensions in the spirit. And I pray, Madam, the Lord is asking me to pray for your finances. Seriously, for your finances. And then the Lord is saying, I should tell you to pray for faithful workers. I'm seeing you do a program for women when you go back. This thing I'm seeing is going to be a powerful program. There is a program in Abuja that looks like what you would do. It's called When Women Pray. I'm seeing that same kind of grace on you. That you are going back to Bielsa and God is giving you uncommon grace for women. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare. You carry that grace right now, madam. My God will honor you. Ah! In the name of Jesus. Supernatural grace. Drink of that wine, sir. I'll pray for you. The grace for leadership. The grace for finance. But I'm... Ah, it's not only pastoring I'm seeing you do. What else do you do? I manufacture paint. You manufacture paint. That's right. Sir, what am I seeing? This is somebody... It's, it's not directly the government. But this is somebody that is connected to the government. The Lord is going to connect him to you. It's, it has something to do with supplies. That thing will make you millions overnight in a way that it will surprise you. Please write it. You will see it happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. I stretch my hands. Drink of that wine. That anointing. Drink of that wine. You will never be the same. I stretch my hands. I take away every limitation from your life. And I decree and I declare your life turns around from today. In the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Goodness. 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 Can we still pray for the sick? We can't close this without praying for the sick. In the name of Jesus, be healed from it now. I command that devil, that virus, go! Now! In the name of Jesus, you go and write your test, bring back your results. Go Listen, I, can we? Yeah. Time is gone. Oh dear. You see how sometimes this thing, we are really constrained. That's why we do our best. The healing anointing is already flowing. God wants to heal. Maybe I'll just pray. I'll just pray for the sick from here. We'll do it that way. Right? But make no mistakes. Just that you, that you are not coming out doesn't mean I want to pray for you now. We'll take a few testimonies now. In the last three or four months, I have seen, I don't know why this happens, but I have seen a dimension of the healing power of God. Very creative miracles. So I want to pray. You are trusting God for a miracle. Lay your hand right now on your body quickly. I want to pray for you now. Please believe God for a miracle. Now, this is what will happen. Overflow. One, two, three. The roadside. And then those following us online. Our time is gone. But as soon as I pray for you now. I pray for you. The power of God is going to come upon you. I'm going to ask you to check yourself. Praise the Lord. We may not take all the testimonies. But since we have chosen this method now. As soon as I pray, I ask you to check yourself. You will be surprised what has happened to you. And whether you are in overflow one, two, or three, I'm going to ask you to run very quickly. You're going to come right here. Pastor Jimmy will be here with Pastor Alpha. They will just check you and we'll take one or two of the testimonies and I'll just confirm that. Um, how many of you brought your prayer request? Let me see. Did you bring your prayer request? Okay, ushers, this is what you, I want you to do. PR department, help them. Protocol, please help them. While I'm praying for the sick, I think we can do it too. Your prayer request. Please make sure 
that your prayer request or that of your loved ones get to the ushers just lift it the ushers have a system of collecting it you don't have to be rowdy those outside you can pass it to the last person in the aisle if you will not bring any confusion you can have that very quickly please lay your hands now i want to pray jesus A lady in overflow one is going to shout a loud shout for everybody to hear as soon as that shout happens i'll begin to pray for the sick very loud shout from overflow one a strong anointing is coming on that person the moment that happens that's the shout there now i'm ready to pray for the sick in the name Please agree with me everyone in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out I'm, I'm praying now every spirit of infirmity please make sure you are hearing me overflow one two three every spirit of infirmity right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I curse you now I curse you now say amen I curse you now in the name of Jesus I command every spirit behind every infirmity over anyone's life be healed now in Jesus name be healed my God the power of God is touching people already be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus overflow one two three by the roadside be healed in the name of jesus now i command every blood condition be healed from it now in jesus name peptic ulcer the lord is healing ulcer right now be healed in the name of jesus christ be healed in the name of jesus christ lumps all kinds of lumps multiple lumps i command those devilish lumps to live now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a number of people having um, hepatitis the Lord is healing hepatitis right now by the power of the Holy Ghost eye conditions in the name of Jesus you're going to feel fire just come to your eyes be healed right now in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus every pain that has to do with the bones i decree and declare let the power of god touch you right now there's someone you have severe pain around your back just right here your lumbar vertebra in the name of jesus i stretch my hands be healed right now in jesus name be healed in jesus name there's someone you don't hear well with your this is left left ear and then sometimes you just hear like a sharp you know how bees are Zzz, that sound the power of god is touching you right now in the name of jesus every kind of fibroid every kind of growth in your stomach in the name of jesus be healed from it now be healed from it now be healed from it now now whether i mention your case or not whatever is wrong with you i stretch my hands and i declare be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus some of you when you fell under the anointing long before i started praying for the sick you got up and found out that you have been healed now overflow one if they are coming here for the healing please just clear the way for them overflow one overflow two overflow three and the roadside I'll give you a minute those online if you're healed you can you know just just send it as an inbox on our facebook page or you can find a way to post it i want you to check yourself now within a minute or two the moment you find out that the power of god has touched you make your way some of you you get up under the anointing you find out that the pain there's a lady who has a severe case of bleeding go and check yourself the bleeding is gone gone completely 
and i'm seeing someone heaviness around the chest is just lifted gone like that please check yourself very quickly and come we may not take all the testimonies but at least let's take a few while we are doing that let me have all the prayer requests very quickly god bless you check yourself quickly koinonia are you celebrating jesus the lord is touching people show them where to come look at look at god touching people already please make your way make your way the power of god has touched you those outside overflow one overflow two clear the way for them just come you can stand on the queue there and let's have one or two testimonies god bless you going on are you celebrating miracles here yeah. make your way be bold don't be ashamed make your way as soon as the power of god has touched you back pain since hold last on year hold on you. just a moment please all make sure if 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 your prayer request has not been collected please i want you to wave it jesus is still healing people you just come join the queue god bless you yes please back pain since last year can healed. you sit for a, a few minutes just sit for a few minutes and then we're done let's just hear the testimonies if as you are hearing the testimony god is still healing people and i want you to make your way and then come to okay go ahead pastor Alpha. my god the... god is still touching people i'm seeing people being touched even in overflow three overflow three check yourself right now and make your way yes please you go mentioned ahead. the case of back pain she's been having the problems this last month back but pain. she's now how long come my dear let's have another mic please anytime we're doing this please technically it should be a standard procedure you should know what we're doing please so that we don't delay unnecessarily how long my dear since last month yes in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it never returns again by the power of the holy spirit back pain gone forever heaviness in the chest disappeared how long my dear just when you came here in the name of jesus hold my hands um i'm seeing someone you had something like a a growth around your neck check it now you'll be surprised to find out it's gone gone completely gone completely by the power of the holy ghost gone completely in jesus name i declare that every operation of darkness over you is gone in jesus name give jesus praise deafness in the left ear since 2012 since 2012 oh come on koinonia how long my friend a man of god told me about in 2012 when i prayed but i was hearing those b sounds and i don't hear really which of them the left ear. put your hand there now in the name of jesus it never never returns to you by the power of the holy spirit yes all sir you mentioned also awesome. how long yes. okay where are you from kaduna, sir. kaduna state yes, sir. that's where you are from yes, your state of origin um, no, biologically biologically where no, are you from i'm from each court. i mean I'm from state. I there's a reason why i said this there's a lot you don't know where you are from there is a long story leave the issue of healing now where eh? i need to pray for you don't feel bad huh look at me where are your parents who are you staying with my mom and my, my stepdad at kaduna okay it's okay i'll talk to you eh? father help this gentleman because this gentleman is a great gentleman but there is a lot i'm seeing in your life i crush the hand of darkness over your life now and i declare be free in jesus also, name Koinonia, you are pain. not celebrating. You are so used to miracles in this place. He was feeling the Thank pain, God but as you prayed for him, it left. It's gone completely. How long? Since July. July. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord perfect you. Apostle, you mentioned someone with pain at the back. It was her for the past three years. What's your name, my dear? Juliana. Juliana. You mentioned something, the lower... Uh, the, the lower back pain. It affected her left leg also. This pain in Check her back. Check it now. Check it. Check it. Any pain? It's gone completely. Give the Jesus last three praise. years. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you again. Please make sure that we have the request. If you are still yet, if you are still with your own, wave it. Just wave it and an usher will come. Look at that man. And you are sitting quietly there. You wave it and let them know. Pain at the back, completely healed. Pain at the back. You fell under the anointing. I ah, see you looking. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's a good baguette, my friend. Huh? If you fall under the anointing, and your destiny arises it's a wise bargain is that true in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare never again in your life
the power of God is coming on someone in overflow one overflow one please carry the person and bring the person overflow one the overflow by the roadside overflow two sorry overflow two I meant to say ah, look how powerful the power of God is I said overflow one and nothing happened I just said overflow two then I now went to say she's had pain on the left left shoulder since how long my dear seven. let her talk how long 2007 you've had what I've had this it will come and go, come and go. But today it has been intense. But when you mentioned the case, the pain left. It's gone completely. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Up, down. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will pray, but the person I'm talking about is overflow two. Overflow two. The overflow by the roadside. So you bring the person. In the name of Jesus perfection for you right now in Jesus name she's had serious um, back pain that back she pain. had to start horse riding so that you can correct but today they asked you to ride a gone. horse yes who said you should ride a horse the doctor yeah. or just advisors <laughs> don't, don't, she's shy <laughs> the horse this is the man it's amazing how you come for koinonia minding yourself and you are surprised to see people just carry you and you are wondering where am I going to the anointing amazing let me just talk to them and then don't worry do your horse thing eh? I'm just happy that you are healed so you can go and ride your horse now for fun in the name of Jesus you are perfected completely perfected in Jesus name I take away this proverb called Ichabod over your life and over your family I'm speaking to both of you now from overflow too in the name of jesus i set you free and i decree and declare that that proverb shall no longer be mentioned in your life it will no longer be ichabod in jesus name i'm coming here but you are the one i'm talking to where eh? debbie it's not the this person you hold this one don't worry they'll hold her in the name of jesus the lord is saying he is going to use you to change everything in your family it will be like a dream but he is going to use you. He's making you a savior over your family. Don't ask how it's going to happen. It's by the anointing. The spirit entered me when he spake unto me that God is going to use you and change everything in your family. In the name of Jesus. Yes, go ahead. She's had severe menstrual pain since she started menstruating that resulted in serious back pain. How Came old are you now? Pain this evening. Sir? How old are you now? 21. 21? And she's had severe menstrual pain? Yes. And she came here with the pain today. But the Don't pain is believe gone. that thing. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cancel it forever. Amen. Say amen. amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, severe menstrual pain goes back to hell. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. amen. Yes, sir. She had headache, heaviness in the chest. Heaviness in the chest. Okay. And then she had severe headache, and as she prayed for her. He totally and, left. And what? Hiccup. She's, the heaviness used to make her hiccup. She was even hiccuping during the service. But as she prayed, she's totally healed. God bless you. Look at me. Where did you come from? Kaduna. Kaduna State. You are going back. Eh? Where's your mother? She's in Bauchi. When are you going to see her? I'm serving in Kaduna, so it has to be December. December. If I, if I give you an instruction for your mother, will you obey it? Huh? Look for 1,000 Naira recharge card. Eh? Send it to your mother to bless her and watch what happens in your life. You just do what I ask you to do. It's not some superstition. Please, you get my point. It's just the law of honor that will trigger something. I release my faith with you. Your mother is going to pray one prayer for you that looks like she's playing. But you watch what that play will do in your life. In she Jesus. had also peptic ulcer as she prayed for her she was totally peptic healed. ulcer how long put your hand on your chest in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare peptic ulcer goes back to hell in the mighty name of jesus goes to hell forever she also had ulcer but she also had kidney inflammation she used to feel a sharp pain she's been healed of the ulcer now when she presses the place before press she it. Feel, press it press it any pain no pain gone completely no. Come on, Koinonia. May God forgive you. May God, you people have seen signs and wonders. 
too much to a point that God bless you. He had a sharp pain in his left side. Okay. You mentioned it. And then he also used to experience dizziness. That he would just be standing, be dizzy, and then slump. But as you prayed for him, he was totally you just slump like that? Yeah, they may even have to catch it. It happened once, August. August 26th. You just slumped like that? Yes, I was falling and then my brother caught me. Come. What if you fall down like the epileptic patient that used to fall inside fire? The devil will just wait until you are crossing a bridge. Then that wicked spirit will come because he comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. In Jesus' name I set you free. You are free now. You are free forever. In Jesus' name. Back pain disappeared. He's had back pain for a long time. Back pain, gone. sir? Yes. In Jesus' name, let it go and go forever. Never to return again. In Sometimes the two eyes go blind. Other times, only the right one go blind. But now he's totally healed. He can see with both eyes. Have you gone to the hospital for this? But sometimes you just go blank like that. Come. In the name of Jesus, put your hands on your eyes. I decree and declare perfection for you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's had back pain for a long time. He's healed now. Back pain. You see, God is, when there are messages behind miracles, you see that God is healing a lot of back pain because it's a revelation. It's not just the bones are what give structures to a person, doctors tell us. That means that by this miracle, God is speaking through it, right? Like he's doing the miracle of Ezekiel 37. The bones coming back. It took the bones to come back for an army to rise. Therefore, I'm praying that everything that is out of order, out of joint, out of place in your life, by the anointing that is characterized by these miracles, let there be a restoration of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yes, please. Go ahead. So, back pain. He came here with waist pain. Sorry. Waist pain. He came here with How long? serious pain. 2014 and now he's gone. try to turn it's gone he Completely. squatted for me and um, no squat you've not you did it for him yes. you didn't do it for me ah. it, it looks like a footballer gone and gone forever in jesus name apostle you mentioned so he's laughing that, uh, until he fell under the anointing a buzzing sound in his left ear and he couldn't hear yes, oh okay you mentioned it and he was hearing the buzzing sounds all through but as you mentioned it it's gone now what's your name sir yeah since 2014 for the past four years it's gone completely here, give totally jesus praise here. in the name of jesus christ i decree and i declare by the power of god never 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 returns to you again Apostle, her left hand the middle finger she couldn't bend it at all she has gone for treatment she couldn't bend it which at one all. the middle finger the longest how long last year why couldn't you bend it i don't know I bend don't... it now let them see it look at this and then as you were praying for the lady with menstrual pain she also had as you were praying right now as she came for the testimony the menstrual pain also left let it go back to hell Amen. and never come to you again in the name of jesus christ she had weak your father's salvation ah we are experts in praying for salvation here you need to find out how god saves people here where you, it's not that god saves them it's how he saves them that is a sign and a wonder I was preaching the series on um, reality of heaven and hell and there was one malam he came for koinonia he was seated outside and while I was praying he, he was studying his, 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 his let me study your hierarchy or what he was studying something like that and then all of a sudden he just I mean koinonia just disappeared and he saw a vision of heaven outside overflow one and the Lord Jesus was talking to him that's how the guy got born again remember years ago the gentleman that came here that gentleman that belonged to a cult group you you know the the guy that funny guy that came outside thinking that this is some harbourless place as soon as i climbed here all that the guy saw was i hope he's still in christ but as far as <laughs> yes the one that slept three days on a graveyard to get power and so when he was here and saw power he said ah, there's power here whether it's demonic power Oh, God's power, there's really power here. In the name of Jesus, there is grace that saves men. 
we declare that your father comes to the genuine saving knowledge of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ God bless witness you. was ill when we take the last person that would be all so that we can yes, in overflow three witness overflow three. For the pain. so as you went outside and you Minister, ah, she fell under God the power of God. God visited Overflow 3 today. Oh, this miracle service was for Overflow 3. As she fell under the power, she stood up perfectly whole. Completely. It's gone. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. Yes, please. Go ahead. She said she was feeling headache and then generally she wasn't feeling fine. But and as you prayed... Come, my dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, it goes. See, I can, her body is even hot. You can see that her body is... She ill, cough, she, but everything is... In the name of Jesus Christ, it goes forever. Next person, okay. please. He's had um, back pain for a while. During the seven days fasting program, yes. he was healed. But yesterday, the symptoms came back. But right now, he has been permanently healed. What was the issue, sir? Back pain. Back pain. Come. You see, the, you see the, the thing again I'm telling you? Miracles are messages in Jesus' name. Back pain goes and goes forever. Yes, She's please. had serious catar since 2010 that lasted for three years. Is it that catar? And came back again, but right now she's completely healed. Completely healed. Put your hand on your chest. Lord Jesus, let this lady be perfected now, perfected forever. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Forever healed, forever perfected. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's bringing restoration restoration to your life in jesus name. now he's had back pain since 2006 and then hmm. as he sat there and you mentioned the case he believed he was healed but the symptoms were still there yes while he stood up from there to come here the symptoms disappeared that's number one because god will always honor faith come my friend then the second thing was that he had this chest pain he had done his ecg scan and they told him they were going to place him on hypertension drugs but while he stood here, the pains disappeared. The heaviness left. Hypertension, back to sender. Back to the devil that sent it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Yes, please. Her grandfather died of this ulcer pain. Her father has it. Her sister has it. And then she's also seeing the symptoms. But tonight, when the case was mentioned, she was completely healed. You see... This, these are the kinds of cases where it's not just a healing for the person. Grandfather died of it. You said father has it. Father has it. Mother, sister has, sister it. has it. Yes. Aunties. Huh? Yes. Everybody has it. Most of my aunties. My, my younger sister, my dad, just all of us. Like where are you from? I'm from Delta State. Delta State. In the name of Jesus, a beautiful lady, the devil should not rubbish your destiny. I can't sue this yoke not just over your life but over your family in the name of jesus is gone now and gone forever in jesus you name. mentioned back pain apostle she came for personal prayers last week just on her own personal um, prayers as she was going back she felt like an arrow was shot in her back since last week she has been having that pain but as you mentioned it, hold the my pain hands in the name of jesus look at me look at me shout jesus jesus Yes, she had this pain in her chest and her stomach. She suspected it Our was Our lovely ulcer. Usher, you can imagine how hard, how wonderful, okay? She was suspecting it was ulcer, but she has never gone for diagnosis. But as you mentioned, the heaviness and the pain, Put everything your hand just on your left chest. in her stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that that devil goes back to hell. In the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Now, everyone, please stand. Everyone, please stand. Oh, they're still... He's had a very mysterious headache, heaviness that just disappeared now as you mentioned the case. In the name of Jesus, come my friend. It never returns to you again. Every other person that has been touched by the power of God, we declare perfection for your body now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, I want you to stretch, I want you to stretch your hands towards this prayer request. Stretch your hands and I want you to begin to declare that as you have dropped this request now in the name that is above all names the only thing you are permitted to pick is your testimony lift your voice and declare it in the name of the lord jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy ghost Embrapo shodopre tekete e karusa katoshkalamos. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over this request. We decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, let impossible situations, please make sure everybody's request is here. Let impossible situations go. Please agree by faith as you pray. We are laying our hands on this request. In the name of Jesus, Jacos Kaprakato Shadebakata, Embrekete Koto Shabragados. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is a representation of the faith of your people. You are the God that answers prayers. I ask, oh God, that you arise. Arise in power, arise in majesty, arise in grace. In the name of Jesus, turn the lives of your people around. Turn the lives of your people around. Turn the lives of your people around. Hallelujah. I stand upon this request prophetically. And I agree with you. For some of you, the things you have written here, the truth is that only God can do them. There's no man born of a woman that can do it. In fact, if you read some of the things for us, even us who God has helped will have to doubt and say, ah, but thank God that the request is unto God. Father, we present before you this request. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that this request has supernaturally turned to testimonies. They are supernaturally turned to testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please stand if you can and receive the last prophecy and impartation. I will continue to speak over your life and I will continue to release the anointing on your destiny until, until your life becomes a picture of everything that God has said. Therefore, please, I want you to humble yourself and open up your heart and your spirit. There is a lady you have been seeing. You have been seeing yourself carrying children in dreams. This is almost all most of your dreams. That's all. You are breastfeeding children. You are carrying children. You are with babies. In the name of Jesus, every fraternity, every fraternity with the gate of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for those people first. I command that devil to leave you now, once and for all. Once and for all. Hallelujah. I'm praying for someone else. I don't know why God is interrupting me now. There is no night that you sleep without somebody coming to molest you. I'm saying once you go to bed, somebody must come to molest you. Whether it's a man, whether it's a woman, whether it's an animal, that must happen to you. You get up and physical things begin to be misplaced. I'm praying right now. Shaka for those people that this word is for in the name of jesus by the fire that comes from the throne of god i declare you and that demonic spirit be delivered now once and for all in the name of jesus now i pray for you if there is anyone here called into ministry or anyone here in ministry but you are not seeing the signs the wonders the results that befit the anointing where are you i pray for you i stretch my hands right now in the name that is above all names i prophesy to your life catch fire catch fire catch fire catch fire he makes his ministers wings he makes his angels wings and his ministers flames of fire. Therefore, I speak over your life. Catch fire. Healing fire. 
deliverance fire break through fire let it come upon you now in the name of Jesus now I speak over every crippled destiny you are trying to make progress and move but something is pinning you down and keeping you in one place in the name that is above all names by the power of the prophetic I shift you to the next level of your life please believe it I shift you to the next level of your life for all those in business here and you're trusting God to stabilize you are up today and down tomorrow I stretch my hands in the name that is above all names may the grace for strange favor may the grace for favor come upon your business and lift you to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ every helper that must show up between now and October miracle service listen you heard the testimony of the gentleman here it just takes one genuine helper genuine sent by God I pray for you and I connect you to the helper that will turn your life around in the name of Jesus Christ I connect you to the helper that will turn your life around in the name of Jesus Christ listen every family here that is saying lord when will you visit us when will you wipe our tears when will you take reproach from our lives i'm declaring to you now by the force of favor may the lord turn your family's life around right now anyone here called barren or you are connected to anyone you know trusting God for the fruit of the womb in the name of Jesus we release their miracle children now I'm praying for anyone here trusting God for a job you are trusting God for a job or you have loved ones that are trusting God for a job in the name of Jesus I agree with you that between now and October miracle service return with your testimony the kind of favor ah, the favor that can turn your life overnight around I decree and declare may that favor and that grace locate you and turn your life around hallelujah now I want you to say amen to this prayer that I want to pray for you the problem that only you will have the anointing and the grace to solve that will kick you and bring you to notoriety in the name of Jesus from the depth of my heart may that anointing come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ 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 help that mama please listen your relevance is defined by the solutions you provide so when God wants to help you he will carry Joseph and put in him an ability to interpret Pharaoh's dream Joseph interpreted the dream of the buckler nothing happened when you interpret the dream of a man of influence you will not remain in the prison i pray for you again the grace the grace that will cause you to solve the problem of one who has the influence and the capacity to bless you receive that grace in the name of jesus anyone here or your family members due for promotion and have been kept down either by tribalism or religion or some kind of devilish factors in the name that is above all names 
we declare their promotion here we declare their promotion now in the mighty name of jesus christ now i agree with you whether i uniquely mention your issue or not whatever it is you came here believing in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands and i agree with you let it return to you as a speedy testimony hallelujah lord in this month of october i'm not I'm, I'm the one asking for you father a dimension of financial increase that your people have not seen this has nothing to do with what you are doing on i'm praying for you in the name that is above all names i pray for you may my god bring supplies to your life this month in a way that will bring tears of joy to your eyes finally i pray for you i don't know what dimension in the spirit you are crying that god brings you into for some of you god has helped you in the area of revelation but you truly need the gifts of the spirit to walk in your life for some of you you have seen the gifts of the spirit work but you need a higher dimension for some of you you need comprehension into the word of god for some of you you need the grace for prayer you are not lazy the grace is just not there for some of you you need faith and courage capacity to believe god for impossible things it doesn't matter what category i stretch my hands and i declare whatever spiritual blessing you desire i stretch my hands to you now let it come upon you right 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 now in the name of jesus christ let it come upon you right now i'm still praying it let it come upon you prophetic fire let it come upon you visions and dreams visions and dreams let it come upon you the grace to interpret visions and dreams let it come upon you the gifts of healing let it come upon you tongues interpretation of tongues the gifts of wisdom the gifts of leadership administration let it come upon you in jesus name father we give you thanks we thank you i decree and declare the blessing that is upon nigeria the grace that has made nigeria indestructible after 58 years may that same grace keep your life intact if nigeria is not dead after 58 years i forbid death from your life in the name of jesus christ hallelujah you are here and you are saying apostle i need jesus you heard the prayer of our dear lady here the sister that came requesting for her father in the name of jesus listen carefully i know we are trying to settle down in the name of jesus that lady i curse the spirit that that lady you are with i command that devil let her go now look at the kind of wild wild spirit these are the kinds of spirits that that make people manifest as stubborn it doesn't mean they are bad when a stubborn spirit is working in your life it will reflect that's why you find out that they don't listen no matter what you tell them they never listen these are the spirits in the name of jesus christ I hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching
watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.